Love to exist. <laughs> hey, Stereo Styles. What's going on, love? How you doing? Uh, not bad. Not bad today. End of the work week for me, so I can't complain. That's good. So your What's topic going on over there? is uh, what do you need in a partner? Yeah, it's it's been some weird stuff going on, and. Like as far as my circles go, uh, my close friends and things that they're they're going through in their relationships, and they be like, sometimes you know what I mean. And we give each other advice and stuff like that. But sometimes I'm 38. Sometimes I'm 34. We had these conversations. You how old? I'm 34. Okay. So at this at this age, I feel like there's supposed to be a comfortability in in this team that you have. Especially at my age of 30, we almost 40. Right? So, my my old lady is 36. I just turned 36. I'm 38. That should be a comfortability in not only do each other know each other's kind of roles or parts in a relationship, but there's there's a, a chemistry and a teamwork that's there. So, in a lot of these issues that I'm hearing, it's like, man, if that's what you're going through, for you to complain and make all these these uh or have all these issues with your partner and y'all almost 40 when y'all mid 30s it's kind of crazy to me it's it'd be kind of crazy to me and i'd be want to ask them like or ask people like what what is people nowadays looking for in the act like really looking for an actual partner and this is easy to say oh man i need a little bit of everything that might not be realistic though. so what do you actually need in a partner that you think like okay i know i bring this to the table so if I can find someone that at least bring this, we might be good together. Because people are in some crazy situations. I do not feel as weird. I I love what you're saying, and I would love for you to elaborate further. And I will just touch lightly on, on my aspect as a single mother, but I'm divorced. So mm-hmm. I have actually experienced marriage. I know, experience the dating life after marriage, especially prior. Um, so it's interesting to hear people that have successful relationships or marriages that last longer than a few years, um, where people are truly committed. And I like to hear the different views on that. Um, and I feel like when you're asking what you need from a partner and you're like, oh, I'm either desperate and I really want it or I'm just like it's not that I'm desperate I really just hey I literally legit want a partner but I have my checklist of whom I want or I'm willing to compromise etc like there's different levels to what's happening and some people are not really transparent on what they really want and that causes a lot of conflict so it's really good to hear from successful relationships and successful marriages because that's different because I mean you can be in a situationship <laughs> and oh, not definitely. mean to be but it's it's really what it is if it's not committed it's like oh you guys are both doing your own thing but it's not committed so and some people want to get away from that but they're like hey well at least I have somebody just to say I have someone and that's not cool either if you're both not on the same page so somebody's not happy the other person's cool with just going with the flow but the other person's like no I really just want only you and we're not on the same page and yet they stay because they just want to say that they have XYZ so alright so I'm a so in, in my in my context What's going on, Katie's play thing? Um, I'm 38. Been in a early on, on, on again, off again, early on relationship since I was 25. Right? With, with the woman I'm with now, which is my son's mother, Angie. Right? So, she was 22. I was 25. And now she, she's 36. Or just turned 36. So she was going on 23 at the time or whatever. That was 25. She just turned 36, and I'm 38, going on 39 this year. So we're a couple years apart. When I tell you we done been through some of the most bullshit, I ain't going to say, like, everything or anything worse than anybody else. 
but whatever you can possibly name that two young individuals will go through in a relationship, I can almost guarantee that that, that we've been there. Almost guarantee that we've been there, or most of them. Infidelity, the whole night. Uh, and we really didn't even get on board for things to to that comfort zone to who each other is. Who, who we are ourselves and who, who each other is until she was around 29 to 30 and I was like 32. And then we kind of came into, not only came into our own, but came into like a unit. Like, okay, this my role, this is it, and this is their role, this is it, and it works, then let's go. And then it was all type of immaturity BS, if you let me tell. Right? Um... So now it's been about 13 years, almost 14 years in like August or September or something like that. And we, that we've been together. Um, there's a friend of mine, right? And it's really her, it's not just her, but her sister is going through some stuff that I, I want to say. And I'm like, and, it ain't, and again, it's not just her. I got multiple people in various circles and they be going through and I get everybody's gonna go through something. Everybody's gonna go through something. Even me and mine go through something. But it's how this unit gonna function and, and progress in life is not one of them at our age. That's not one of them at all. So uh, they're having income issues for one. This is the, the biggest part of this. Uh, they're married, both in their mid to late thirties. I forget the exact ages, but one is like. I think they're like two years apart. It's like mid to late, like there's like 37, between 37 and 40. I can't, I can't remember the age. Um, and he's like on again, off again, working, and she doesn't. It seemed like she really didn't didn't work, and she was more of like a stay at home mom. She was taking care of their kids. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they have one, two, three, four. Is it four or five? four or five kids. Again, she's not in one of my circles. It's her sister that's in my circle. So, my some of my stuff is, is all... Yes, four or five kids. Um, and, again, she, she doesn't work. And she has, like, odd jobs every now and again. And he seemed like he was working, but currently, I guess he's not. And they're up and down in their household situation. Um, right now, they have to move person who last owned their house so well was selling their house and I guess something had came up with that or whatever the case is but the owner wanted to use the house for their own so however they want to break it down they have to move right she quit her job before she got her taxes knowing that they had to move like this spring something should be coming up where they had to move this spring um she quit her job she, she was working as a bartender with that job because she was beefing with another co-worker who she didn't have to talk to but that's neither here nor there but she quit that job knowing she needed the money and then she got her taxes which is a nice sum of money and currently she has maybe about two thousand dollars if that of, of that of said tax which was in the five digits and I don't know what he's doing now a situation came up for them to move i.e. Uh, uh, buying a home and paperwork done went through they need $9,000 for a down payment they don't have the $9,000 they don't have the money at all to where people are crying and depressed about the situation and they're trying to figure out how they're going to get out of this house that they have to get out of but get into the new house will get the down payment for the house that they're trying to buy which is a bigger issue for me that y'all can't even afford the house that you're staying in to get into a, a house that's going to cost more overall, i.e., water bill, mortgage is way higher than what they're paying for now, and they can't, they can't damn near afford that beer, um, which is crazy. And it's like, how, how are y'all, like, how y'all get this far, and the two of you as a team can't or can't come up with the funds, knowing that this situation was coming, and y'all both just completely ignore responsibilities. And did whatever y'all want to do. And now it's a blame game on each other. On who didn't do what. 
in a relationship. So it's like, hold on, man. But you chose this man. And you chose her. Not only do y'all choose each other for boyfriend and girlfriend, but as life partners, y'all had kids together. Y'all also got married. So what do you do now? What what, what, what do they do? And I'm like, I, I don't know. I can tell that you is a sticky situation. I agree with you. And get into the house. I agree, it I is. I don't believe that y'all can afford to stay in the house because of how y'all finances are. So it's like, at this point, I think a bigger issue is should y'all even be together if y'all are partners? It's for richer or poorer. So that's at that point that you take the time out to get counseling, financial counseling. You agree? I, I, I said that to, to her sister, which is one of my friends. But it's like, I don't know. It's like a, there's, a, there's a disconnect there, though. There's a disconnect. I don't even think it's just, it's just financial. I think they have an inner issue problem where I don't want to... I mean, when you it. choose to get married to someone, not everybody's raised to know what to do. So that's why it's important. Because it's not like, oh, I'm going to therapy. You're like, hey, I'm going to a financial expert. Take away the counselor part. And they're trying to teach both partners, even the one that might be more financially, you know, in tune, they'll be both on the same court to learn what they need to do going forward. Because I know it might seem simple to people like you and me. They're like, hey, I know what I got to do. At the end of the month, I got XYZ to pay for. And so I budget. It's not easy for everybody because they weren't taught that way. And even if they were taught that way, some people go in different, you know, paths in life. So it's not necessarily on the parents per se that they were raised by, whether it's their auntie, their grandma, or their mom and dad, whatever, whomever they're raised by, their caregivers. Um, At the end of the day, they choose to go into life, and then it's a choice that some people want to mentor them, and they will give that extension to them. And you're that friend that can do that and say, hey, you know, I can't do a lot for you, but what I can do is I can offer financial literacy to you guys that's free, that you can learn from XYZ wherever you might have found it in your local community and give those resources to them so then they're provided an opportunity for them both as a couple as a partnership to learn together so it's not like it's pinpointing on just one individual because they're both learning together on their mindsets on how they operate and how they can better benefit yeah yeah I just said, oh man, it's, it's ridiculous. Because be, before we got here, I talked to her, right? And I suggested that she hold off, put everything to the side on this house buying. Y'all should find another home to rent. She was stubborn and very adamant. No, I want to buy, I want to buy, I want to buy. And I'm like, in my head, I didn't say it because me and her is not that close. Again, I'm close to her sister. So, excuse me, her sister had her on the phone. I mean, and I know her name. She know my name. We're cordial, but I mean, like, she's she not someone that I can call up. You know what I mean? She's not. She's not in in one of those circles of mine. Um, to, to go off how close we are. So there's things that I would say to a friend because in serious situations, I try to be blunt, very direct. No sugarcoating anything. No read between the lines. This is what it is. This is what we got to get done. Um. With no disrespect intended. And I wanted to say to her, because she was like, no, I have to buy, I have to buy, and it has to be a five bedroom house, and it needs this, and it needs that. And I'm in my head the whole time, I'm like, but you can't afford that. You can't afford that. And that's why I said earlier, I could give her the information and the assistance to help her get out of the house that she's in now and finish closing the deal on that new house. My issue is, because of how you and your husband move, though, and because of your irresponsibility when it comes to money, finances, finances, and your, your inner work of your relationship, I don't believe that you could keep the house. So why would I help you get into a position that I know you're not going to be able to sustain? 
So that's just like, and then they, it came back down deeper to, and they was like, man, hold on. And then it's, if you talk to her, it's, you know what I mean, he this, he that, he that. But I also know things about her from her sister that she do or don't do or don't want to do or care to do. Like, she really don't try to work. And if you ask her why she don't work, it's clearly your husband needs help or feels like he needs help in the financial responsibilities. She say, oh, because I, I got to watch the kids. And in my head, I fall back. A lot of people have kids and still work jobs, so your household needs another income and you choosing just to stay home but then complain about your finances how does that don't make sense to me um but then you sit back and blame him now, I, I can guarantee you if I ask him it'll be what she not doing and it's like but y'all both not doing certain things to progress your household whether me and my, and my old lady is on the same page or not our household is going to progress that's not going to change. I could be mad, irritated, pissed off at her, whatever the case is. Don't like the way she moves. Don't change the fact that my kids got to live comfortable and I got to live comfortable. So my career path is set at this age and I know what I got to do. There's nothing that's going to stop that unless I get injured or something. There's nothing to go. There's no type of inner workings in a relationship that's going to stop that. And I do feel like he is flawed as a man. Me personally with how I was raised. I feel like he should, he should be providing better. But I also don't know what his his tech side is. I don't know what his level of education is. You know what I mean? I don't know what his skill trade is. I don't I don't know none of that to say he should be in a better position or I know everybody can be, you know what I mean? I can easily say, oh man, everybody can get out here and get whatever, do whatever, but I mean you, you never know, you know what I mean? Uh what hell somebody back if especially if you haven't talked to him, I haven't talked to him, so I I don't wanna jump out the window on that. But I feel like their their family dynamic should be better off than what they are if certain things was being tended to properly. And I feel like a lot between the both of them, a lot of the ball is being dropped on some crazy craziness that y'all can't progress. Like, okay, no, 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 for context, this same person again, they're married. I can't remember how long they've been together for a while. Um, they have three to four. They have three to four kids together, and then she has one that's the oldest that's not with him. Um, they're on what is low income section eight, right? She's on section eight. I guess she never told the uh-huh. of people that she was married or whatever the case was. Um, so she's living on section eight. What well, they're living on is section eight. I don't. Be- Again, I guess whatever paperwork was done, he wasn't at it. They weren't married at the time. She didn't care to tell him. However that, however that worked, right? Um, so you kind of get in the way without even paying full rent. So this is where I'm at. Like, if y'all struggling financially now, if y'all struggling financially now, and y'all getting away with not even paying full rent, we're having to pay just a phone bill, maybe cable bill, uh, we energies, which I don't know what it's called where you guys at, but like your lighting, uh, your lighting gas, wherever that's called, where y'all at. Uh, up in my area, they combined a long time ago. They call we energies now. Um, if y'all in, in buying food, if y'all struggling paying that, and y'all biggest bill, y'all don't even pay in its entirety. I think they're supposed to pay what at like twelve, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred, something like that. They pay like two or three hundred from what I was told. If y'all can't afford to pay that, how you going to buy? I think that the quote unquote loan is for like 150000 How are you going to afford to stay in a house that's 160000 Your principal interest in escrow, if you have escrow, is probably going to be like, with, with your insurance, going to be like six, seven, eight hundred. That's already more than your rent. You still going to have wheat energy, especially if it's a bigger house. You still got your light and gas, it's probably going to be a little bit more, especially if it's a bigger house. You still got your phone bill, cable bill. Now you also got water bill. Now you also got damages to the house or fixing up the property. How are you going to afford that if you can't afford this? So it's hard for me to That's real. suggest things to fix your situation to get you into that, at least to get, get you into that house when I don't think you would be able to keep that house. That, that's why I fall back on that. What's going on, KDG? So that's it like, sounds oh, a lot it's, like they're not being realistic. I understand that. Yes. Yes. Definitely that. And it's like, but but things keep <laughs> things keep progressing. It's like, hold on, man. 
I, I, and, I, and it's more than just just their relationship. It's, it's multiple relationships, and it's like we had a show the other day, and it was like, at what age do you stop playing? Um, at what age do you stop playing kid games in adult relationships? It, it's it's similar uh, to a degree. It's like I know what I do best. Right, I'm not the all around. I'm maybe man in the household. I'm not like a maybe a jack of all trades. I'm more of a provider. A one, that's not that's on that's on ten stars. I can provide financially. I'm a I'm a work. I can work my hands to the bone and get us wherever we need to be. All right, I'm not the most nurturing or affectionate person in the household by any means. That's where I lack. I know that. So to me it works out that my partner covers in the area that I like. She's cool with letting me leave the charge financially and taking care of all that. And she falls back and she, well, she don't, I ain't gonna say she falls back because she still owns her own business. But she, she, uh, she falls back and she, she, she's good with the loving, nurturing of the kids and taking care of the household. That's what she does. So it's like, at what age did you finally realize, like, okay, this is what I'm good at. If I'm single or looking for a partner, maybe I need I need to find somebody that checks the boxes that I don't check. And I don't feel like people are doing it. People saying like, oh man, she got a fat ass. I like her. I'm gonna be with her, have kids, and get a motherfucking family. You don't even know what boxes she checks for you. And then y'all get in these dumbass situations and neither one of y'all know how to get out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two of them, two like you're literally them. speaking like some real truth here because there's a lot of times that a woman or a man whoever they identify as they'll get into a situation and they'll portray what they think that the person that they're pursuing is going to be attracted to and then after the honeymoon phase goes then they have to keep that image up and typically nine times out of ten that's not what happens and that's why it's failed correct and I can see like maybe if we was people was younger so that's why you know what I mean that's why I say it's kind of like an age thing but when you in your mid when you in your 30s you should be getting your shit together you should know yourself for the most part and know what you need if you in a partner if you're looking for a partner wouldn't just just don't want to be single or have a poly or whatever it is that, that you went to. If you want to be monogamous, and nah, I need to. I feel like people are just grabbing people based on whatever. And what are y'all even talking about in y'all dating phase? Because this shit ain't matching up, man. I and mean, we getting too old to be in in some of these these stupid situations. I'm almost forty. I wish I would have to move out of the house I'm in for whatever reason. Have to get into another house, but not have the money to get into the other house. And, and it's not just me by myself, because things can happen with one individual. But I have a partner, and me and my partner can't make nothing happen. I feel like I don't know, man. That that's a horrible partnership. Then I feel like that's a horrible partnership. I don't know what y'all are doing. And the only thing, it, the only thing end up happening at the end of the day is your household, which is your kids, end up suffering. I agree with that because um, um, to a part that I'm going to extend on it's not really age related um, because I've dated people I'm 34 I'm, I'll be 35 by the end of the year and um, I've dated men from as early as 26, 27 and as old as maybe 60 if they were telling the truth about their age <laughs> and um, mm-hmm. I realized that it's not age specific when it comes to when I've dated men and I can't really speak from a perspective of men dating women except for the guy friends or acquaintances that I have um, that is a ongoing trend that people are not portraying themselves as the person that they should be or are and um, they're tweaking themselves as they go and then when they do later commit then they're traumatized or like oh my gosh what did I just get into? I'm trying to make this work. I don't want to X, Y, Z, blah, blah. Um, 
and it goes both ways it's definitely not gender specific because you know it's the typical oh a woman bashes a man or a man bashes a woman but we're in a whole new generation where it's not gender specific and it's it's frustrating um when people are just not being real to who they are and their personalities and they're like i just need to mold into what society wants me to be or what I think will capture the attention of XYZ and all that. And it's, it's exhausting um, because even when you do finally commit to a marriage, which is supposed to be a lifetime, you'll grow. So whoever you do get with and you marry, you hope that they'll grow with you and that they don't stay stagnant and they don't try to keep you in a box. So you're in another realm when we talk about marriage, but we're talking about even before that point, what do you want in a partner? But you would hope that the partner has an everlasting mindset that they will always be resilient and willing to progress with their partner as they grow and become a different person. Because some people might stay in the same career for 20 plus years, or some people might change their stuff all the time. But either way, whether it's male or female or whatever they identify as, you want them to be real with themselves and truly love themselves so they're not always trying to find who they are within their partner um, because that's exhausting for their partner as well. Um, And I'm just touching a little bit lightly on that subject as we come into the months of, you know, Mother's Day and Father's Day etc all right so, so so look question all right so you say you're you divorced single right i don't i don't know your situation at all not that right i'm a uh, divorced single i'm a single mother of four kids from the same father correct okay so uh, okay of uh, four okay that, that, that part's important to well it's not super important but to, to the question because i said because you'll probably be looking for something different so your answer will probably be more in tune to us people in our thirties. If you were in uh, on the dating scene currently, not saying that you are again. I, I, I don't know love to exist. You know what I mean? So, if you were on the dating market right now, what would you look for in, in a partner currently as as a mother of four? So, I can tell you what I have looked for. And as of right now, I'm not looking um, because mm-hmm. I realized that I have to go through a phase of healing um, and I'll expand on that. So to make it short, when I was looking, I was looking for a man that had at least at the very most foundation wise, the same beliefs. I don't believe that I should be with someone that doesn't have the same beliefs that I have, at least on the religious aspect um Mm -hmm. worship wise like um it's very important to me they don't have to go to church as much as i do or any of that um or read the bible as much as i do it's not like that it's just at the very core um if they have the same beliefs like if i'm christian are you muslim etc if you're not the same belief system as me then hey we can be friends and maybe we could build to xyz but um, I just wouldn't jump straight into the whole relationship aspect. I freaked out many men, including in the Christian aspect, when I say specifically I want a courtship. A courtship means that I specifically am dating for the intent to marry. So most okay. people are under the assumption that the next person that I date, you're going to be my husband. That's very ignorant, unfortunate for someone to think that I would think that way, but um, I'm literally like, hey, if I'm serious about someone and we felt like we had enough um, things that we agree on, like, for instance, even if that man that I date does not have children, do you love children? Some men actually volunteer and have a passion, like they're coaches for sports or they volunteer in their community. Those things are very sexy to me. I am, um, I can't remember the Um, actual terminology in my mind at this moment I'm not attracted to men from an outside perspective or sexual um, aspects it's the um, the intelligence the intellect is what turns me on like can you articulate your words 
Are you able to have an intellectual conversation with me about nature, about philosophical things, etc.? Um, that's very important. And unfortunately, um, I cut myself down and I've talked to guys on, let's say, specifically dating sites. I would have went on there saying, hey, I have XYZ degree. And I would have dated men that don't really have aspirations to better themselves. They're like, hey, I'm in whatever position that I'm in. I don't aspire to be greater. I'm a lifetime learner. I believe Mm -hmm. that you should always educate yourself and continuously try try to um, improve yourself no matter what age you are. I could be 80 something years old. I'm still going to try to find another way to educate myself um, to improve my knowledge. Not just so I can say I'm a know-it-all, but it's because I want to stay in the know in my community and my world that I'm living in. (laughs) It just makes sense, you know? Um, And that also Mm -hmm. improves the amount of money that you need to make to succeed, especially with me having four kids that's very important to think that way but I've compromised I've definitely dated in the past men that didn't have those ambitions they were like I'm very well okay with not having a car even though I'm complaining about it I don't have a car I, or I don't have my own place but I'm complaining about it I'm like well what are you going to do about it though like let's work together we can be a partnership but they still want to be like I want to complain there's nothing I want to do about it I don't want to further myself I'm just gonna stay in whatever situation I'm in and just be a victim I don't like the victim mentality that's very um unattractive that's how I feel I don't care if I date a man and they initially when I meet them are not in the best place they can be financially because I believe that whatever partner that I'm with that truly cares for me and especially my children I'm gonna be your biggest cheerleader and I'm Unfortunately, the men that I've come across, they act like boys and they're still going through their phases. And if a man's not confident enough in himself that I've realized in my own situation, please correct me if I'm wrong. um, They've belittled me and they've made me feel less than um, because they don't choose to have a bigger view in life. And so they settle in the situation that they're in and... I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I had like a oh, notification you, you, you. and then cut me off. <laughs> the thing like it swipes over to the next. Um, so, I mean, that kind of sums it up. I don't know if I was going off into a tangent, but I just wanted to be very detailed in my answer. I didn't want to be like too direct. Um, get out of here. Cancel. Yeah. Cancel. Um, okay. So is, is it is it anything that you feel like, and you don't gotta tell tell me the specifics that you lack in in any uh, field of uh, how can I say like okay like I said for me for instance, I probably like more in the nurturing loving I don't say loving maybe the nurturing and affectionate side of of a human being is there anything you feel like you lack in that if you were on the dating scene that you probably look for in this individual or do you feel like you just need someone to cover the basis that you that you just that you just stated um like as of right now because I'm going through the single phase of trying to really recognize who I am and what I deserve um and what I desire that's something that is difficult to answer as of now but I will say prior to the situation in my specific prior um, dating situations I didn't have um, I didn't have a basis I just kind of took whoever would give me the attention that I was attracted to Um, and I'll be very specific when I say it's not that they had to be a certain way I would Mm -hmm. say I either like you or I don't (laughs) And um, so I didn't really have a criteria. Um, and that's kind of dangerous because that means that <laughs> you're portraying. No, I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Like, I'm portraying, yeah, I know, I know. like, I'm like, I'm very um, insecure and in that I don't have any boundaries. I don't have any morals, nothing about me. 
uh, that makes me special. Even though I might have some specialness about me, that kind of is, it's blinded when it's like, oh yeah, you know, like a man knows himself. I'm not a man. But I mean, I've talked to male associates that I have. And they're like, the fact that you would take a man on and you would take him out and you'll pay for his date you'll pick him up and let him drive your car and you'll pay for the hotel stays and all that stuff That's crazy. he ain't got nothing to give to you but here I am he knows obviously in his mind you're freaking insecure because you should not settle Like, and it's crazy because in my mind I'm like I don't think I'm selling at the moment when I'm dealing with that situation I'm like hey sure. I want I don't want a man to think that, hey, when you get with me, you got to take care of my kids. I want you to know my kids are straight. I just want you to be loyal to me and make sure my kids are straight, like, as in be safe with them. Like, I don't need you to financially take care of them. They're good. They were good before you got here. So when you get with me, just be a family. Like, just be good with doing stuff with me. Now, make sure I'm good from um, a romantic aspect. Like, take me out on a date. These men couldn't even do that. Like, the men that I was settling for, they wouldn't even afford to take me on even a simple date, like Burger King or some shit. Like, that's how bad it was. Like, it was like they couldn't afford anything. And I was in, like, these men, they know their worth. And I've heard women that are actually confident about themselves speak from that aspect that they're like, hey, these men, they know what they're supposed to do. It's not like they got to be rich. It's not all men are thinking there's a certain amount that they got to make, but they know that, hey, at the bare minimum, I got to have X, Y, Z together. If I'm not stable, then whatever woman I'm with, I'm going to belittle them because I feel less than of myself. And it's the same thing with a woman. She feels less than of herself, so then she's going to accept whatever gives her attention. Not necessarily everything, because like I said, I didn't say I accept everything, but... <laughs> I definitely said yes. I've said no to some guys, but there are definitely guys I've said yes to that I was like, uh, I think you need to put some more work in to let me know that you're damn near serious about me or this is not just more the convenience for you or, you know. And um, was it, was when that I'm you, like... Mm-hmm. Was that you thinking about that in hindsight or in the moment of the day? Um, it was a mess. Like, yeah, like, that's why, the, that's why I can't be on dating sites right now. Like, I took myself off because it's unhealthy for me per se to be on a dating site to be actively pursuing a man when I know that I can attract the same type of man I me and my ex-husband that I have my four children with we separated twice and the second time we separated um it was a done deal he finally moved on he remarried and then our divorce was finally finalized but during that process I was like dang I reflect now it's officially like almost six years now that I've never had like a serious relationship it's always been situationships that I've been in um yeah mm-hmm. I've been with guys yes I've been sexually active etc but it's made me suicidal at times um I've definitely dealt with depression a lot um confliction of who I am when I'm supposed to be um I've been distracted from the things I'm supposed to do because I'm trying to please them um and I definitely can say that most of the guys I talk to um, I settled for the fact that they weren't even on the same educational level that I'm in. They don't have the same ambitions. They're like, hey, I'm just cool with living the day-to-day life, getting fucked up, partying, or even if they don't party, they just might just chill at whatever spot they get fucked up at. Whatever. They just didn't have ambitions. They were just like, I'm living in the moment. And I was like, hey, in the moment, they're giving me that uh, attention that I want you know and I mm-hmm. I would gravitate to that because I'm insecure I kid you not if a man did that right now because of how insecure I am and I'm admitting that I would gravitate to that because I'm weak minded because I am lonely and um, so that's why it's important for me to be um, in tune with my spiritual as well as my career journey and focus more I mean, my children, they've never really been on the wayside. Um, Actually, let me take that back. There has been a time that I have put them to the side. But I definitely woke up. But there's times that people don't wake up. Like my ex-husband, that's why people in my church tell me to pray for him. Because I never understood that when they say pray for people that hurt you or that 
perceive to be your enemy, you pray for them because it, it's not about making you feel good. It's because it's bigger than you. Like, my children, they need their father. So, for the sake of my children, I need to pray for him to find his way to do the right thing and be the father that I know he could be and that he has shown me to... It's not even about me. It's about the kids. Like, so... um everyone's going through a spiritual journey and um it's affected me a lot um in my journey but at least I haven't settled enough to where I was like okay I'll take whatever you know that gives me the looks and that might be here even though it's inconsistent to say I have a man okay I can say that but that doesn't mean I didn't settle I've definitely settled many times um but I did wake up eventually and then shook them off but they still try to come back. They keep my number. I don't change my number because it's inconvenient for me being an entrepreneur. So my number is attached to a lot of things. Um, so I was like, you know, I meet a lot of people. If I change my number, it's an inconvenience because I'm probably have to change it all the time. I'm not going to do that. So um, that's actually how I end up back in the situations. Well, in the past, I have. Um gone back to guys in the same cycle because I'm like oh they thought about me I'm special I'm like wait no it's because they ain't shit so they keep trying to come back to me because it was like well I still can't find nobody so I'm gonna fuck with her because she don't feel nothing about her soul so I'm gonna go back to her because mm. who who wants a single mom with four kids they tell me that shit they make me feel like shit they belittle me the mean, they say that? behavior yeah they say this shit like that to me like you better be glad you better be lucky that I even Ooh. gave you attention yeah they talk to me like that yeah, man, that's disrespectful it is but you know I'm not innocent of course I say mean stuff you know like I'll I don't always take it to uh, that degree that they'll say it like that but I might cuss them out and like, man, fuck you, you a bitch ass nigga, or, you know, like, I might say something like that, but at the end of the day, we're human, and and that's why I do allow people to come back in my life, because I'm like, you know what, I forgive you, I've said things I don't necessarily mean in anger, but I will elaborate when I'm calm and say, look, this is what I really meant, and I would really appreciate if you don't treat me that way if we're going to remain in each other's lives. And then it's supposedly understood. And then these people that are consistent with being narcissists and don't change their ways. I'm in therapy. So I think about it from a therapeutic standpoint. I'm different from most people. I don't think any of the people that I talk to in my life go to therapy. I have a therapist. So if it wasn't for my therapist, I would think I was crazy, you know? Hmm. That's a lot, love. You know what I mean? I apologize on behalf of men out here. You know what I mean? There's a lot of whole-ass niggas out here. You know Yo, I mean? do not, but you women gotta, do gotta, not gotta try to apologize. You're, you're rare. Like, the fact but, that you speak on how you treat your wife and how you view things and what you guys have an understanding as a partners like I can even speak on the you know aspect like I'm speaking from the aspect of dating outside of marriage you know being divorced I can speak from the aspect of when I was married and I want to teach you know new couples on what to do and what not to do because I'm not going to tell you that even though my ex-husband is not in my children's life I still feel like his mother has said it very well that he's lost and he's in a situation where he doesn't want to be in conflict. And I remember him as that always. To the point where he has completely removed himself from his mother because his wife has convinced him, well, she's sleeping with the enemy if she is communicating with the ex-wife, as in me. Mm-hmm. And oh, so his, his new wife? Yeah, his new wife. Okay. Yeah. His new wife has convinced his her son my ex-husband you mm-hmm. know that anybody that's cordial with me she wants them all to be enemies um and that's just you know the Jezebel spirit to me she's trying to convince him to be evil but um she doesn't believe in the same beliefs that his mother and the rest of his family believes or even I myself so uh, I 
for the first time realized when they say pray for your enemies. Not that not to say that my husband is my enemy, but I see now why they say pray for your enemies. I'm like, what? What do you mean? Pray for your enemy. You know, pray for your coworker that's like, you know, talking down on you, gossiping on you, you know, always trying to touch you down, right? They, so when they say pray, people don't explain it. This is what you're supposed to do. pray that they have an understanding, a knowing, a forgiveness, a different aspect. That makes more sense than, oh yeah, bless them, blah, 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 blah. That's fluff. Pray properly. You know what I mean? Pray that mm-hmm. they come to know Christ. <laughs> because when that happens, then they will become a new being. They're not perfect, but there's true relationship there and they will be transformed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, that's what I do um, for the sake of my children. And his mother is a God-fearing woman. And me and her, we have fought together. I ain't gonna lie. We have. And that's, that's what's crazy about the devil. It serves his soul that he's trying to cause division in all families. But everyone can co-parent beautifully. Even if a marriage does not work between a mother and a, um, and a father, you know, the husband and wife they could still beautifully co-parent you know as husband and wife and the other new family even if the other person didn't remarry why does it always have to be oh when the husband or wife remarries then there's bliss or xyz when the husband or wife marries then the husband blah 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 no that means there's jealousy there and it's like I ain't gonna be happy until I mess your stuff up then when I'm happy then you're good that's just selfish that's not how we should operate. So we should want everyone to operate from that aspect that if everyone's Gucci, then we should be good. So that's how you look out for each other. Um, that's why it's hard for me. Like, and when it, when you're looking for a partner, you say that like you and your wife, you guys are in tune with each other. You're choosing to be partners. She's your rib. You're Adam. Yeah, it, took, listen, it took us a while to get here. <laughs> it took a while. And that's to get awesome. Here. And, it was, and it was days, of, and that's why I said, uh, when I said, like, now we was off and on again early on, like when we was in our 20s. And it then it, we didn't really jail until it was, it, I think it was really hurt. And they say hurt people hurt people. And yeah. she came into our relationship with her. And although she, although we started a relationship together, she still wasn't trusting like she should have been because of that hurt. So she had she was very guarded, but didn't tell me that. I didn't know that. You know what I mean? And you just come into a situation not trusting me at all. So we butt heads on a lot of shit because that some women say. Uh, all men are dogs and all men are, I'm like what they got to do with me whatever whatever you got going on with him is him they ain't got nothing to do with me. what's going on Elizabeth Elizabeth Peyton welcome in Peyton welcome in AD welcome in Blake thank you guys so much we just want to address your beautiful people if you have anything that you would like to add please add into the audio if you like to be co-host with us we would love for you to be in here whether you're single recently divorced or you're married or whatever situation that you're in situationship <laughs> whatever what is it a contanglement entanglement my bad <laughs> contanglement I just made a whole new word <laughs> If you're in an entanglement, we would just love to hear whatever ship that you're in. And um, we would just love to hear that. Um, because this is real. This is live. What do people need in a partnership? Welcome in, Peyton. Hey. Hey, girl. <laughs> Peyton has some stuff on her chest. <laughs> oh, this no, girl no is I so don't. Beautiful. I love her. <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, oh, right quick, love. So I love you. When I said, "Oh, my dog is going crazy," I think so. I just said, "Oh, um, what kind of dog you got?" When I was like, "Nah, that's kind of disrespectful <laughs> on him saying that because men, men know how we grew up, and I'm a person who grew up with a mother, single mother, of four. 
So I would never say that to no woman. I have I got my work ethic from my mom. So it wouldn't make no sense for me to tell another woman, I I, I would make you I do it to talk to you because you a single mother of four and my own single mother. So, you know what I mean? So if anything, you should know how hard that is to do work. I see my mama work to make sure that we do good. Make sure that hold on a second. Make time. sure that you mute the microphone if you're not talking at the moment so there's no interruption in sound. Anyone that comes onto the stage, please make sure that you mute your microphone um, and then when you do speak, unmute yourself so we can hear your lovely voice. Um, so me, that's why I said as a man, I apologize. I mean, even though I don't have to to me, I ought to that. If I'd have heard that if he'd have said that to you while I was around, I'd have said something to him. Like, bro, listen, <laughs> I'm going to have a problem. So now I feel like you openly being disrespectful. Because that's how I'm going to take it. That's just how I took it. As soon as you said it, I'm like, nah, you can't, you can't be telling women that. You you let your brother, your brethren, a, a, a fellow man, go out. It's not like he got 10 kids with every time he was in a marriage. They had kids. That's, that's called life. You know what I mean? That, that happens. He did what she was supposed to do or According to her belief, what she was supposed to do. I don't, I don't, I don't understand what's the problem that you would say something like that. It's inappropriate, for one. And if you did say like uh, say that, and if that's how you feel, then you always felt like that. And why the fuck are you even talking to me in the first place? Probably, probably try to get something to get laid. What's the purpose of that? that to me, that that was inappropriate. But <clears throat> I know we all start our dating process, no matter what age we are, normally based on looks. Normally. Let's say we in the physical, we at a club, at a bar, at school, at work, or whatever. You see somebody, there has to be some level of visual visual attraction before you even approach that person. Then you get into the talks and the conversations and this, that, and the other. I feel like some people just never graduate to that point of finding out what those qualities are that you feel like you need. And maybe some people don't even know what, what they actually need from a partner. That might be an issue as well. Are we just dating people just to be dating people nowadays? It feels like that sometimes. It feels like people are just going through the motions. That's true. Not people are really serious about their marriages. And that's why I can't wait to hear Peyton's view on this as well. Because you're a man and you get to speak from this perspective of a faithful man that's like, hey, Look, I don't been through some things. It ain't perfect with my wife. And I'm divorced. So I can't speak from a successful marriage. <laughs> but Peyton can speak from a successful marriage. And you can speak from a successful marriage that works and that people could hear. And I can speak from a perspective of what I did that I believe was wrong. And that we could have done that as a couple um, between me and my ex-husband with our four children to have made it a success um, so that way I can forewarn people to make things better because I think that's just awesome um, that people are transparent about what they need in their partner and not to you know hush their mouth just to not have issues because unfortunately it does build and it causes issues um, in the end and I think that's beautiful because um, marriage is beautiful no matter what this world is going to say at the end of the day it's beautiful if people are real about what their expectations are. So, uh, how long has Peyton been married? Peyton, we, Peyton we need you. Where you at, girl? I am still trying to figure out the sap. <laughs> okay, um, I have so been married new. for 13 years. Okay. Y'all give her a clap in the audience, please. For 13 Look, years. Yes. Stereo have you been married? <laughs> I, 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 if our partner was in here, we probably have our uh we probably have our sound board and everything. But she ain't here. Um but I have I've, I've been in relationship for the past thirteen years current. Because I was twenty five and I'm thirty eight now. Well actually going on fourteen years. September. Okay, so you guys are uh right there, y'all tight. Thirteen years. If I could have good of applause up here on stage, I could, but they don't give me that choice. I'm still trying to figure out how this app works myself, even though I've done it a few times. But in the audience, if y'all can give an applause for these thirteen years marriages, I I'm loving it. Cause seriously, what is it? Um, 
please, Peyton and Stereo Styles, let me know. What is it they said? Was it the first five years? Once you make it past that, then, you know, you can make it possibly. Like, if you don't make it past, was it five years? What was that mark that they said? Because I swear I didn't make it. Uh, I always thought that they said it was if you got past the first year. That was the hardest year, but um, we're still going. <laughs> You know, it okay, hasn't been easy me recently. I might run off any day now. <laughs> you silly. <laughs> you know how much it's y'all love each other. You stupid. <laughs> See, that's what, when you guys get, you know, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> One of my friends that I went to high school with, he jokes about it. His name is Brandon Jordan. But he says I'm Brandon D on uh, Instagram. And he jokes, he jokes like, cause he's trying to be, you know, a full on entertainer. So he's a firefighter and all the other stuff. Like he's been in the Greek community. Like he's pledged, you know, his fraternity. I pledged my sorority, blah, blah. So occasionally he jokes and then he's like, yo, if I keep messing around, my wife's going to leave me. I'm going to be out there in the streets having a sign, etc." Like he's hilarious. Like, and sometimes I'd be like, is he serious? Like, you know, like, but I'm like, I don't even dare to ask him. You never know. Like, because for real, for real, like, everything looks like roses when you see people post that. <laughs> Y'all have to get, and forgive me, it is allergy. <laughs> I don't have COVID. Oh, yeah, look, it, it always works. <laughs> but oh, no, it's always works. But it's not necessarily honestly, hard work. I think he's joking. I don't think he's serious. I think, like, legitimately, no, 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 he is no, joking. No, no, not but, but, but he I, does. I that, you know what I mean? Some days I get in that yeah. mood, like, man, I'm about to yeah. pack up my Xbox. I'm about to yeah. get the fuck up out of here. You know I mean? <laughs> and you gotta have jokes like that. Like he he posts his wife on there sometimes where would it be like, okay, should I pull out the butcher knife or something? Like, you know, like it's hilarious because you don't know if it's real or if they're just joking or if it's a joke about something real. Like either way, it's like, hey, you can relate to it and that's what makes his videos go viral. I was like, dude, we was in high school together. I was just school and I was like, Shane, you're like a baby to me. Like, I remember that. And I'm like, it's just cool to reflect and then people be transparent. And he even talked about back in his few dog days when he had like, you know, the six pack, the eight pack, whatever. And I was like, oh, I had this awesome body. And then he had this song, uh, The Time Machine, if you guys know about it, that goes viral on Instagram. And he played it, it was like, oh, I wish I had a time machine. And then it was like thousands of views, like in one day. And it was like, a lot of people were like, oh, dang. You know, and it's superficial, but it's still real because you want to be all that for your partner. Like, you still want to look visually appealing to them, and you still want to be intellectually appealing to them and all these things. But you can't read their mind either. So it takes both. It takes two. So somebody's got to be transparent, but it's a delivery. So sometimes you got to be funny about it. Like, hey, what you want? What, steak or not? Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like, you got to... Find those, those little spaces or those, those pockets, you know what I mean, where it's kind of like, I'm serious, but I'm joking. You know what I mean? Maybe if I was younger, I'd have been gone. But because I'm older and I know, you know what I mean, there's not... If, if you and, your, if you and your, your partner are progressing in life, then there's no need. I, right. Then that's just me talking, right? It's like in my situation. We're progressing. We're fine. So if, if I ever say, man, I'm, I'm up out of here, that's just the heat of the moment. But as soon as in reality, I know I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just gonna go to the couch, play to my Xbox. In the, in the swamp somewhere. <laughs> I'm playing my PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it's gonna be. That's just, 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 just talk. But there, there's almost like might go to the bar, blow some steam off. I'll be back, baby, tomorrow. Yeah, for fact. maybe later you know I mean? tonight. Might pack up, but I'm right back. I'm gonna fuck up out of here. And as soon as the street lights come on, yeah, baby, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You and know, that's I real. And everything, you know what I mean? It was just a bad moment. Yeah, I tried that before. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> what? What you mean? Like, what you mean trying to care? Act like you don't care? Yeah, well, okay, so I probably didn't tell you this, Shabika, but um, probably a month ago when we were, it was really hard. Um, I. <laughs> All I was going to do is go to the gas station to get some cigarettes, and I didn't say goodbye to him. He packed my stuff up and made me sleep at my aunt's for the night. God damn. 
Okay, because it's different with, see, I ain't gonna lie, I dealt with that with my ex-husband too. Like, that's why I said I can teach people on what not to do according to me. <laughs> I can't I can't tell you anything else but what I did wrong and that I reflect on and I'm like, I know what not to do going into a relationship. And I honestly would say it's different when it comes to men and please, Serial Styles, correct me. When it comes to men thinking differently on how women operate, like y'all just weird. Like I just think men are weird. Like <laughs> no, this 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 is why I, I tell people. Women women from you a, a male whole husband, please be honest. Is is the most complicated. From a male from our perspective, women are complicated and need everything in the world. That's from our perspective. But a man normally couldn't be more simpler maybe misunderstood at times because we so and I, and I say that because I've had those conversations situations like in my own relationships and they'd be like you would just say anything I'm like nah I was like, well, what do you want for your birthday I'm like anything right because I'm I grew up in a household where we didn't really get a lot you know what I mean he also say we had you know what I mean clothes and food on the, on the table clothes on our back food on the table which was always cool to me you know what I mean and we did, did get things but I'm not the biggest person on receiving gifts I feel like if I get anything, I appreciate that. Because I appreciate the smallest thing. But early on, I was like, hey, man, you just give me anything. That overcomplicated to her, though. In her head, what does anything mean? That shit it is complicated. Me everything in the world. Give it, give it what would I do? <laughs> what would I get this? Is it this? Is it that? Is that? Is he like shoes? Is it cologne? Is this a video game? Is this whatever? And I'm like, it could just be anything. But maybe I was simplifying it too much. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't. That's that's where the dynamic between men and women come in. You know what I mean? Women would need a four whole four course meal. I'm cool. You make me some Roman noodles. Hey man, I'm just happy to be eating. <laughs> I ain't even <even> starving. <laughs> Give me a bologna sandwich. You said you just food. be happy to eat. Y'all, y'all silly. You, you know what? I want to know, Peggy. If you cook whatever for your husband versus cooking him something special, which one do you think he prefers? He would prefer if I made something special. Now, stereo see, styles. I'm, you need to keep it real with your ramen noodles, but... <laughs> see, I'm like <laughs> stereo styles. I'm, I'm the simplest I'm person. I'm not saying... You know, it's nothing on page. I'm not saying I wouldn't like that. I'm saying for a man, it's not needed. It's appreciated, but it's not needed. You lying. You know, John, that's, well. that. that's why now the right men now. that are going to trouble in paradise, not not your current, not your wife right now, okay? I'm saying think like the men. You know how they say think like a man, okay? So I think that's Steve Harvey's book, whatever. Just pretend for a moment that you have trouble in paradise, okay? Because mm-hmm. you ain't got trouble in paradise. That's why you can't think like that. Think outside the box. Come on. Think outside the box. I'm divorced. I kind of know. When a man says, I'll take whatever. Uh I'm going to tell you like this. My family peep this specifically, okay? Peyton knows her man. She said, my husband, and that's good because if they had like a couple's night, like, okay, that's a plus one on her book. Like if they had a couple's night and they was like having a date night with a couple and then she was able to answer that correctly, you're like, oh, my baby knows me. You know what I'm saying? And you know your baby. You know your baby, right? So, I mean, I'm just saying, I remember I'm reflecting when I was married, okay? So, me being divorced, I remember, okay, it's all fun and games when it comes to these fun nights. But when it comes real to the nitty-gritty, if nine times out of ten, your partner's trying to avoid conflict, I cannot, I lost count how many times I've been at the store. And we was, I said, babe, I just want you to come with me with me and the kids. Let's just go to the store together. Whatever you want, just put it in the basket. And then he'd be like, oh, I don't want anything. So then I got super anxiety. I'd be like, every time we went through aisles, do, do you want this? Do you want that? Like, I'm constantly trying to read his mind. You know how exhausting that is? Say what you want. And then, don't let me get started. Let me get off the kids' presence. When it's intimacy, if you don't say what you want, or if you fake it, you got real problems, and you know what I mean. Like, I'm tired of this new generation of the world of... That's why everybody got divorced left and right, because nobody's being real. People gotta be real about their mental health, 
all that because who you gonna grow old with a mannequin come on now you want a robot I'm gonna do whatever you want me to do I will hey, do what you want I'll cook this, your this, steak those, those, those maybe I'm right those doors for men is getting real <laughs> lifelike now you know what I mean they got the full body on them now okay and the girls got the rose and so okay. it don't matter no, it's not okay. That's not the generation we should be going into. You laughing, but you know that's not that's that's not gonna work. That's not how a marriage is gonna work, and you know that because that's not that's not how you guys were successful, and that's not how Peyton and her marriage has been successful. And I didn't say perfect. You didn't hear those words come out of my mouth. But I'm telling you from someone who uh, was a military wife. And uh, I, said, I literally, I heard from his current wife <coughs> before they got married. She said specifically to me, because this new generation is weird. She said, <coughs> I don't care what he does <coughs> as long as he stays home. <coughs> Something's wrong with, with people now. People don't care as long as you give them what they want. Superficial. But then hear this. If his superficial went away, do you think she'd stay? You don't know. We don't know. I don't know. Maybe she would, but that's scary to get with someone <coughs> only to find out they'll stay with you. <coughs> only because of what they'll do for you. <coughs> that, that doesn't commit to vows at all. <coughs> I walk it all out, Charles. Forgive me. Allergies. <coughs> Love it's over here, uh, coughing up the lungs. I'm not gonna die, I swear. Yeah, I'm gonna take it on the air. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody get love to hide. Welcome in, Zay. I need a hide it maneuver. Where's my kids at? I mean, they're just chilling, playing on their phones, eating their it's spaghettios. Mom's not dying. Y'all ain't worried? Okay, cool. They're just doing their own thing. <laughs> they ain't even worried about me. Mommy, are you okay? That was my voice. Of course not. They didn't but no, me. but so I, I think <laughs> I think in 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 those uh some of those questions would come in. That that's the part that would come in for what do you need in the party? Because I don't really need anything on from a woman in the money aspect or gifts or anything. That's why I think I'm willing more to say, give me anything. Because through the year, I normally buy. I, I normally whatever I see, I normally want. I'm not very like I ain't super rich by any means. But if I see something, I get it. I don't normally wait to get it. So by the time a birthday comes, you ask me what I want. I really don't have nothing that I want. You, you see what I'm saying? So I'm like, well, give me anything if you want to give me something. I'm always cool. You just giving me some money. You really ain't doing nothing but giving me the money back down and gave you over the year anyway. So just give me. Some That's money. how I used to be. That's why I used to hand make my ex-husband gifts because I was a stay-at-home mom and housewife. So I was like, it felt weird to me to buy him something. I mean, even if I made money here and there, like doing some side work, it still was like, it didn't feel right. So he really appreciated when I would hand make cards. Like, you know. <coughs> yeah, Especially when he was the first my father. Like so yeah. Something, you know what I mean? Uh... Do a little dress up day, rose petals, or whatever. To me, with me again, but that's a, that's that's a simple part of me, and that's not something that I maybe need need from my partner. So I'm cool with getting whatever because I, you know what I mean. But that goes to the communication on what what do you need from a partner? What do you need from somebody? Do you need material? Well, when you get with a partner, partner, you should be making sure that you can get material. If you're a materialistic person, you should make sure that this motherfucker got a type of job or income that can sustain your materialistic self. Because getting with him based on anything other than that and then find out he just hop jobs and don't don't have a sustain, uh, self-sustaining income, then complain that he don't got money, it's kind of crazy. Because you, you never told him or looked for somebody when you was going through your dating phase and told him, hey, I need somebody that's, that's financially stable. You never said that. Right. So, okay, let's go into it. I will say, what do I need in a partner? And I know I was like bouncing all over the walls. What I need in a partner is someone who's loyal and honest. Like, it's really important to me because I feel like no matter what they're going through, 
I don't care about how much money they make because I feel like I've said this to every partner that I was serious about within the five year time span of the foolery situation ships I've been in. Look, I don't care what money you make. Let's just work together and you're family oriented. And it's really important to me that God is at the forefront of your life. I don't say that you got to be religious. You do not have to be at church all the time, read the Bible, blah, 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 blah. I'm not worried about that. But your belief system, it has to be in the same accord to me. Because if that's the case, then your honesty and loyalty is on the same principles that mine are. And Exactly, people, exactly. Thank you, Peyton. Thank you. Because you know my husband does not believe in a creator. And it's made it very, very hard on us. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then there's also so situations. Hard. Girl, when I've dated guys that say they're supposedly Christians, they don't, their actions don't line up. I think that's worse. At least if a man can say, you know what, straight up, I ain't with it. I'm not religious. I don't believe in your God. I don't believe in your Jesus. You can respect that versus somebody saying, oh, I am that. And then their actions don't line up with it. It's like, come on now. Now you're just a whole liar on top of a liar. Like, and that, that's why I used to tell you. And I still believe what I said. Hey, and respect the fact that you told me other stuff that's even deeper. And I've told you even more stuff on my stuff that's even deeper too. That at the very step when your husband does become a believer because I'm speaking that to existence because through you he can become a believer he's real like at least he's not keeping nothing from you I mean nobody's perfect people will keep stuff under the dirt I don't keep everything in the fore light sometimes I mean I don't think everybody knows I masturbate you know I kind of ran out of batteries with my finger shit whatever don't judge me but what I'm just saying okay like we're all human. Okay, we got needs and we do stuff and we got to come to God and be like, yo, I'm human. God, please forgive me. I got to do what I got to do is try to function in this life. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? And he, re- he appreciates that. God, our father, appreciates that. That's why I said Jesus, his son. You know what I'm saying? So, but your husband, seriously, and Stereo Styles, I believe you can rock me when I say this. If a man can be real instead of faking it and be like, oh yeah, I'm a... Hello? I don't know what happened. She dropped her phone. Freaking devil. I swear. <laughs> that's, Damn, I was talking to myself work. the whole time. The devil's work, love. Oh, I was, I was high. I was coming Ooh. in high. <laughs> Damn, y'all hear <laughs> shit I said. I was talking to myself. Damn. <laughs> Damn, I was talking to myself. <laughs> Damn, I, I I gotta catch a breather because I was I was like woo I was like yeah I was like I was in there like y'all missed the whole thing. Fuck my garage, man. That's what happened. No, we only missed like the last maybe 10, 15 seconds before before you went to talking again. Probably like fifteen seconds. Oh, seconds, oh like okay. I thought y'all missed the whole thing. So the point is no, what no. I'm saying. Look, God is on fire right now. Okay, so. We need to real recognize real. So I respect a man like Peyton and Stereo Styles. You recognize you're a freaking man. I don't have balls. I don't have a dangling. Okay? So you're a man. You respect a man to come up, punch you in the face, and be like, nigga, I don't like you. And then y'all might, you know, battle it out on the tennis court. Whatever. Yeah, I, Basketball I, I don't, court, I don't whatever. I don't respect the Will Smith flat. You know what I mean? But you, you definitely gonna have yeah, to that was a slap. But it's like, nigga, you gonna punch me? Okay, we gonna box. We gonna fight it out, you know what I'm saying? We are gonna do well, this. Tap me on my like, shoulder. And I turn around. Don't fuck a punch. Yeah. Tap me on my shoulder. Turn it around. I turn around. Hey man, I got beat. You know what I mean? I need. Man, five catch him in the. Oh, tell him, catch me in the back. We are gonna fight respectfully without a whole freaking audience. And then you know we are gonna handle this later. So, but no, seriously. Outside of that, like jokes aside, like I respect Peyton's husband because I've observed that I'm like a lot of people have portrayed themselves and said with their words, you know, with their mouth and their profiles, etc. Okay, whether I met somebody in person or on a profile. Oh, I'm a Christian, but you don't go to church, you don't read the Bible, and you speak stuff that's not consistent with your beliefs. 
it makes nothing to me nothing to me and I'm not perfect either I mean I got a whole bunch of stuff about me if you listen to stuff that I talk about I'm not trying to portray myself as perfect either God wants real he doesn't want you to say I'm perfect because he know you ain't that's why he sent Jesus and that's just what I'm wrapping up about that I respect a man that's saying you know what I'm not a believer. I'm going to keep it straight with you because guess what? That man is more powerful than a man that's going to fake it and then, oh, okay, at some point he might actually become a believer but you're like, well, you kind of cried wolf for so long. I don't I don't really know when you actually became a real believer. If nah, you really that's, did. That's, that's not my lane. I, I tell people, I guess technically you know? I would be an atheist, but maybe not. You know what I mean? Because I believe that there's something I just don't know what. I mean, Back story on me, you know I mean? I was born Thank you for being real. And, and you That's know why I'm tired of people being fake. You see what I'm talking about, Peyton? I appreciate people being real instead of faking it. Oh, yeah, I'm XYZ. But then, nah. really? It's, it's, it's you know? Because I mean, to be yourself than to pretend to be something that is not. And then try God to respects to that more. Between whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, again, yeah. I, I was big at the church that's coming from a, a kid from Mississippi down south who was big at the church, especially in the 80s. I was born in 83. By the, by the time my mom moved up here as a single mother, my, my dad was in the military, uh, and she moved up here to do her own thing. Church was way different, and I, did, I couldn't rock with it. I couldn't get into it. You know what I mean? It was more like a financial thing than down south, come as you are, and we're going to get this word in, and then you go home. It was more like a like a show up here. I, I live in Wisconsin currently. It was more like a show. So I fell out of it by the time I was okay. a teenager. But I was always big into reading. So I've read the Bible, I've read the King James Version, I've I've read scripts from the Quran, I've looked in, into uh, Buddhist, I've, I've re- anything good that I can take from that is what I take from that, because I try to be a good person. So whatever is going to make me a, a better husband, a better father, I, I can take that. You can you can give me some information right now and give me a script from something, and I'm like, what? And where that's at? And you can say, oh, man, this is so-and-so, so-and-so. And I'm going to go find it and look it up. And I'm going to really try to simulate that information. I'm like, and that's, I really intelli- that and that's intelligent. I never knew that was exactly. out there. Exactly. From anybody. From anybody. Hey, what? What's your religion? Any religion. Any you religion. Yeah. Nice, and you can give me something nice that'll make me a better man. Hey, I need to go look into that. Let, 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 let me assimilate that information. I like that. I like how that's worded. I don't, I don't know what it is. And I can assimilate that information. I feel like it's going to help me, my spouse, or my kids. Or, or my family around so that, that's, and that's so wisdom guess, I'm an atheist but I, I I do believe that there is something you know I guess I'm a spiritual person yo um, I respect and, and you I respect you and Peyton's husband more than I respect any man that's coming to me talking about some oh yeah I believe in the same thing that you believe in but then making stuff off, off their head saying whatever they want to say twisting scripture to benefit them and then screw me over and then show me that they're worse than somebody that supposedly doesn't believe in nothing and you might as well just said you was an atheist yourself because i mean there's atheists like you that legitimately are supposedly quote-unquote better humans than the people that are supposedly religious okay and i I think that's what comes with keeping an open mind because you could call like my guy brandon real big into church right and he'll call me in a minute hey man i think we got a good service this sunday man and i'll be like you know what b i'm there let me get this information, and, and I'm coming to support. I'm this. And then I got another friend that'll be in to say, hey, man, we got this service. Hey, you know what? Listen, I'm there, bro. I'm there. Let me get that information to fuck. You better be talking something nice. I don't know. Man, maybe maybe it's, the, it's the, uh, the experience. You know what I mean? I don't know what it is. I do like knowledge, though. Uh, it's always been one of my things. I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not really, like, a super close-minded person. So, um... I'm always, I'm always into, you know what I mean? It, I can learn anything at any point in time. You know what I mean? You're never too old to stop learning. So any, in, any information, wherever it comes from, as long as it's some good information, I'm, I'm willing to accept that. So I've been, I, I'm always into it. And big into the book. And of course my mom is big into the book. So, so like I used to be really, really, really big into church or whatever as well. Um, But what I have, I guess, came to the conclusion of in the past year, all religions are man-made and they don't come from God. And what really matters is just that personal, like, connection with your creator. 
Mm-hmm. So I don't even go to church anymore <laughs> because it's all to me. It's it's just all fake. It's for a show, and like you said, it's all about getting the dollar. It, it's changed a lot, and even in my lifetime, it's changed. It's changed drastically, and to the point where they got ATMs and churches and all type of weird, weird stuff going on now. So I, I don't knock the church or anybody who goes to it though. I mean, the family. I don't knock the church, and I, and I don't know your church or wherever you at. You know what I mean? I can only talk about my personal experiences. And up here in in, in the Midwest, up up north, it's weird, and it makes you kind of not want to attend. So as long, long as you know, what I mean, to some degree, you got that spiritual connection, because uh, your church can be your home, your house from home. You know what I mean? That 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 can be your exactly, your, your yeah. As long as you got your, your your connection on how you do things, then, then you good. But some some of these temples is is not is not right. So I understand. People right. Are there, people yeah. go What's going so on? So what Blake, do What's you want in a partner? Me. Yes. Probably like, what do you look so, for in a partner? Probably what what my what my spouse is. I, I said it earlier that I'm more of a of a uh, provider. I've learned that about myself. I'm way more of a provider than a love slash nurturer. Way more. Um, and my old lady, she feels that she feels that in. Where she lets me do, do what I want to do because sometimes I'm not there. You know what I mean? Those Ten hour days, eleven hour days, twelve hour days. That could be for a whole year, two years. But she understands why I'm doing it. And it's not because I don't want to be home or don't want to, whatever the case is. It's just I know me and I know how to go out and get it. And I know where we're trying to progress to. And I know how much work I have to do for us to make it to wherever we're trying to make it to. So she's she, she's cool with me doing that. that that's my part. And I'm, I'm learning. And I've I told people this more than a few times. Being a nurturer and being affectionate, I would say more like being affectionate, is something that I had to learn to do. Towards, towards, like, especially like towards my son, it's something I had to learn to do. My father wasn't there. You know what I mean? So I don't know how to show or how it's supposed to look from a father to a son. I don't, I, I, never, I didn't know that. You know what I mean? Or, or I, I didn't see that. So me doing that to my son Jonas is something I had to learn to do. That's, it's not, it wasn't something that was just like built in. I feel like a lot of nurturing and the loving part, normally it seems to come from a woman more than a man. And she, she feels that she's very loving. She's very nurturing um, with, with our boys. Um, and again, she, she also just lets me do my, my financial thing, whatever whatever that is, from films to podcasts to working a nine to five to real estate. Like she's like, hey, baby, you got it. Whatever you need. And if you do need something, let me know. And I got you. I, I, well, you let me know. And I got you. And that's just how we've been rocking. So I feel like that, that affectionate, loving and nurturing side uh, as far as like the house anything that really pertains to the household she takes care of I feel like that's if, if I wasn't with her I would need a partner for that so I feel like I would I would like in 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 the household stuff if that makes sense not 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 as far as like cleaning and regular basic stuff though but like you know what I mean family issues I feel like I, I would like in that if, if it was like out the gate I feel like I, I would I would do poorly in that I could learn, but it's not. It wouldn't be like reflexive. Yeah, I've had a. I had well, my mom was single until I was like nine, and she got remarried. But she wasn't the type of mom, and we're best friends now. And she regrets it, but she was the type of mom. She did not show her affection very well. So I have. I'm still learning how to do that for my children. Mm-hmm. And to show, I guess, attention or affection towards my husband as well. And that's what I look for in a partner. And that's hard for him to do as well. Dang. Yeah, because not everything is second nature. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm a military person. You know what I mean? Again, my, my dad was in the military. My mom left him. And I didn't find that this out until I went into the military, that he was in, in the military. You know what I mean? He came back home battling his own demons, but by that time I had my son. And it was just things that just wasn't second nature to me. 
um, because I didn't experience. Again, my mom worked two or three jobs to take care of us financially, so I'm not gonna say that she she wasn't uh, always around type of type of thing. But you know, what I mean, she she, she worked. <coughs> Excuse me, she worked her butt off. So, um, sorry, yeah. y'all, my phone died. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Hey, Don't get the devil on your back today. I know, right? Oh, welcome in, Copper Goddess. Look at you, boo. But, but yes, uh, Paige, I, I, w- I would need someone that, that, that fell into that pocket of um, kind of taking care of the household w- with the love and nurturing and the affection part. So that's, that's not something that that's not gonna just to me. Again, I'm way more of a provider. Like if you talk, talk about remember the, the old saying, you know what I mean? I bring home the bacon, and then she, she cooks it. That that would be me. I I can bring home all the bacon in the world, but I might not be able to cook. So I would need I would need somebody that needs to cook it. Perfect. Not literally talking about uh eating. So. Yeah, that's definitely my husband's definitely that would be his mindset. He is the provider. He tries to make as much as he can, and but I, I always try to tell him that's not what makes the world go round. <laughs> no, it, it, even with me, sometimes uh, let, me, let me let y'all know this. We kind of have like, okay, I, I I don't want to, I don't want my son to ever go without, right? And I and I've told people this more than a couple times that. Well, on different occasions that they will take someone in your family's line to sacrifice their time for your family to get where maybe they, they should be or could be in life, right? So, i.e., it took Jeff Bezos' family line. It took him to get and do all the hard work that he had to do, which he probably sacrificed a lot of fucking time in order for his family now to have generational wealth. But at some point in time, somebody's going to have to make that sacrifice. I came up struggling. My mom came up struggling. As far as I know, the dude who says my dad was struggling. My grandma on both sides, they were struggling. I don't want my son to struggle by any means. And if as comfortable as I can make him, that's what I'm going to do. That's, that's my mindset. So I get it as much as I can, not only for, for me and my spouse, but for my kids, but also possibly for my kids' kids. I'm trying to create generational wealth. Do I want to be at work all day sometimes, every day? Or all? No, I do not. Trust me, I do not. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's a sacrifice that maybe I, at a point in time, I never conveyed that to my spouse, that that was my mentality, is to get as much as I can while they're giving it, because I might not be able to continue this much longer. You know what I mean? I don't know how long I can keep up manual labor at that point in time. So while I would I like to money, say I that like I need to get the money so I can do that. Go ahead. You know, it's really important that a man speaks up, and it's all about like you know, um, you know, the tone and all that. And I can tell that if you ever got to the point where you're like, hey, I'm getting weary, and you know, I might need to get myself checked out, like you know health wise and all the other stuff because your health's more important so you can live long as possible and stuff and be healthy for your family and my mom you know she's disabled so she's been in the ICU four times this year and this last time it was pretty scary and we're still dealing with her up and down health issues so her husband had the audacity to disappear for the past two weeks and you know it really upset her because you know it's like what's going on not to say that all of a sudden this is some issues that just came to pass but he made it very clear over the past years that he kind of looks out for himself like you know self preservation um it's like oh yeah i care for you but only to make sure that i'm straight like it kind of comes off like that they've been married for 22 years that blew my mind enough to where i was like dang i gotta be careful um because it's like what tone do you set in your marriage because she told me a long time ago like I just rather like when I asked her like why would she be with this type of person that would do xyz and stuff and um 
she was like well I'd just rather not be alone and I don't think anybody else would want me and honestly I come across that same mentality for these past five years of being single and it's frustrating you know when you're a single mom a lot of men might not think that way but women do but what I would say is like now she's coming of age and she's disabled so when he gets mad he he like talks down to her like well, I'm the only one that's paying blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, it's not like she's not only bringing money. Like, she she does bring in money. It's her disability money because she's fucking disabled. Dude, that's mm-hmm. exactly why I don't want to live off disability. I am disabled too. But I know that I can't live off of disability. So I'm working my butt off, driving myself crazy, trying to provide for four kids. And I don't have a man. But I do have a family support system to help me with these kids. But reality sets in that, hey, God forbid something happens because my family's dying, you know, left and right. Just like a lot of people's family members have because of COVID and other things that are not related. Um, it's just at any point, I have to make sure that I'm, my kids are straight. And it's, it's a lot of stress on me. But I'm like, hey, I'm trying to make sure we're straight. And so, you know, even if we don't have to worry about this extenuating circumstances we just always want to make sure that we have a partner that's going to say hey i got your back even if you fall that's why one of our vows says through sickness and through health sickness doesn't just mean physical it's also mental and that's my stance on there (laughs) I feel like it's, it's, some, it's some information, some valuable information has been said tonight. You paying attention down there, Blake? That's a that's my uh, Caucasian sister's husband. He's the silent listener. Don don don. No no no. no. <laughs> if, if he start talking, he gonna say some off the wall shit. So uh, he, he he probably best. You know what I mean? Keep it quiet. Blake, Blake, weird like that, but he cool people. Uh, so, well, I should say brother, that's my brother-in-law. Um, see, I feel like it's some valuable information, man. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I hope, I hope, as, as time goes in these next couple of years, we we get on, especially as older people. We don't, we don't need to be picking nobody that can't do nothing for us. And I'm not saying you need somebody to actually do something for you, but in the midst of something happening to you, they should be able to take up the torch. For you, to a degree. Now, for there's a lot of people in situations where they 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 partner can't pick up that torch for them, so it's like your family kind of hurt on on when that happens. Um, but that's what I, that's what we've been going through the last couple of weeks. It's been like one, two, three, maybe three three or four different people. So four different relationships that I've, that I've talked to that's just wild, wild stuff that happened. Pain and love. Y'all missed it the other day when we were talking about another one of my uh, friends' uh, situations where, <laughs> I ain't gonna get into it, but, you know what I mean, it's, it's recorded on here, where um, I think they've been married for 10 years. Uh, she's 40, and I don't know how old her husband is. Uh, I've only talked to her maybe a handful of times. And she stopped sleeping with him for like the past year because she caught him cheating a few times. And now she's cheating. And now they both know each other cheating and actively cheating. They don't have sex with each other, don't mess with each other, but they still go home, have arguments, and sleep in the same bed just to wake up the next day, suspect each other of doing things again. They both work, and it's just a cycle of going on and on and on and on. It's like, why don't y'all just leave at this point in time? I get you believe, but... But there's no there's no productivity coming out of that. I don't even know what y'all are doing right now. Like y'all kind of like in limbo. And he doesn't even work. He pays all the bills. So I don't know about that. That's that's some, some more whole ass shit to me. You know what I mean? That but, happens a lot. Honestly. Like, oh my, my gosh. Does that sound like, like kind of like my relationship, Shamika? <laughs> not your current relationship, is it? Yes. So, okay, a little backstory. Um, well, we've been married for 13 years. Most of my marriage, he has talked to women online. 
and I've stayed with him through all of it. And this past June, I started replying to messages from men and I would flirt with them. Um, Mm. But I have stopped. But, you know, to him, him doing it to me was completely different. So when I did it to him, it's like a big freaking deal. So that's what I've been dealing with for the past six months or so. (laughs) Um, I just hope it gets better at some point. Yeah. I know he doesn't trust me and I understand that. I understand why he wouldn't trust me, but he also never fully got my trust back for him. (laughs) Correct. And honestly, I went through that with my ex-husband. And honestly, it's not even just those situations that cause the detriment of our marriage. It's the fact that we became violent. Like, I can give you kudos, Peyton, for not going like Carrie Underwood on him and like, <laughs> you know, drug your <laughs> key upside of his swooped up pretty wool, four wheel drive, how that song goes. And, and then going Jasmine Sullivan and you know, bust the windows out of his car. I did that shit. I listened to those songs way too much and I really took it very intentional and I fucking did the shit. And um, that drove him further to like dig his heels in and do exactly what he was already doing and committed to it and and unfortunately it stuck um there's plenty of guys that are like oh yeah my wife's crazy as shit like she's gonna murk our murk, murk both our asses if if i if she ever finds out type shit and then a man will make sure that that doesn't happen that the wife doesn't find out but my ex-husband didn't have that much respect for me. So I'm not saying that I condone um, people being on some Mr. and Mrs. Smith shit, (laughs) like the movie. But um, honestly, like some people have more respect for each other. And I just think that from the very core that you have to realize that some people don't even have a standard in themselves. Like I've, like, I've met my, you know, children's father and like his family, I mean, um, and I realized that he doesn't come from a background where marriage is like super important. Like people are just like, hey, if it doesn't work out, then they move on. And um, but if you come from a background like that, then they'll try their hardest, maybe. Or people can be like the new generation of trying it. But I feel like with you guys, if he has a hint of jealousy, and he's like, okay, well, I'll back off from that shit. Like, just you do what you're supposed to do so I can trust you, then maybe there's a possibility that shit works, you know? But with mine, it was like, it's like, you really never had to worry about me, ever. I just would spaz out when you do shit, you know? And the one time that he thought I was going to do something, he was ready to call it quits. And that was like a light bulb in my head, but I didn't give up at that point. And then I didn't do anything else. But then when we split up the last time, um, the shit just got really ugly because at that point I opened our doors to people. Like people are like in the situation that we went to school or he went to the military with people and we let them live with us. And they were choosing it as an opportunity to party with him. And they caused more, it, it, it was worse than what it should have been. And I think maybe if it wasn't as complicated as it was, we, we could have probably made it work. But unfortunately, it set um, an easy uh, setup for him to leave um, because it virtually was like a single situation um, because of all the crazy people that were involved at that time. And thankfully, you <laughs> don't have to deal with that because you wouldn't have been as crazy as I was to believe that you can open your doors to everybody um, and think that they would do right by you guys, like, as a family. So, I I honestly think it's a red flag if I'm with a man and he doesn't give a fuck who the fuck looks at me. Um, not that I'm going to entertain that shit, but if I did, um, I would want him to check me and be like, okay, well, let's make it up in the bedroom or whatever, you know, whatever. Like, I think that's hot. Like, you know, like there should be some healthy jealousy in there because if they don't care, that means that they don't care about you really. So I think that's really hot, like to a certain degree. I want him to be worried about it 
to a certain degree. Not not to think I would leave, but be like, hey, I'm putting my stamp on it. That's my shit. You know, like <laughs> especially when you're into okay, so it, that's fine. Like this, this going off the topic a little bit, but going on to uh, what you just said, right? So, have, have either one of you seen the movie Deep Water? What movie is that? With, Maybe uh, Ben Affleck on uh, Hulu. It's a Hulu original. Maybe I haven't. No, I don't think I have. It came yeah, out sure. last month as a Hulu original. This goes I'll check on. it out. If you haven't seen it, listen. I'm not saying if, if it's at the movie theater, it'd have been if. I mean, I don't know what type of movie you guys like, but in, in the, uh, do I even want to say it? Because I don't really want to spoil it. If you haven't seen it, but maybe you don't. Man, just give me a snippet. I would love to hear. Like, I mean, right, I like watching the movie. That's cool. If this, if this shit is toxic, love, I don't even know if you're ready for this. This shit might spill into your actual relationship uh, status. Um. But going to, to what you said, right? So the woman was kind of like that. Like, <clears throat> she seemed to be a younger. Day. So the movie, I, I forget the woman. Is it Melinda? Melinda Armanis? Or, oh, I, can't pronounce, I can't pronounce her last name. And then Ben Affleck are, are the main star. And it picks up with they're married. I think they have an eight year old, like a seven or eight year old uh, daughter. In the, in, in the start of the movie, she flirts with men openly. Even at his friends' parties and everything, she she also invites men to those parties and like kiss them around the parties, all type of stuff. There's two there's two different things with two different men, two different times that she invites to their house so she can have sex with them while him and his kid is there, and That's he kills them That's later on. You said what? Kill? You said oh my and god? She's like a she's like a serial cheater and he's like a serial killer, a and then they're in a relationship be- together. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, you didn't so, hear me say that. It's not on record. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. So, but the dynamic in the acting is A1. I found this shit is super crazy. I'm like, what? But that goes to, 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 to wrap it back around. If y'all haven't seen it, again, it's a Hulu original called Deep Water. Uh, very good. I think we, me and my old lady watched it a few weeks ago. Very good. I, I recommend. It. Don't act in alone. There are some loopholes in the story, but I heard uh, because it's a movie, they're not in there because it's an actual book as well. Um, <clears throat> and you know, we all know the books have more information than than the movie or the film, TV, television. So wait, there's a book too. Yeah. Okay, the, what's the, the book is not based on the movie. The movie based on the book, so the book is already out. So what's the, what is the book name? I think it's by the same thing, Deep Water. Let, let me double check. Okay. I'll double check for you. Um, Deep Water based on the book. But that, that goes into what you would... Yeah, so the book is called Deep Water as well. Make sure this is the. I'm gonna get the right one. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure to give y'all the right one by, by the right person. After the Water Adaptation of Patricia Highsmith's 1957 novel, same name. So, yeah, it's called Deep Water. The book is called Deep Water by uh, author Patricia Highsmith. And this, the movie with Ben Affleck is based on the, that novel. Okay. Ben Affleck's a good actor, so I can imagine. <clears throat> but so to wrap that around to what you were saying, when, there are certain things that she say is that it's almost like she prides herself on not being controlled. But in situations where they're talking, if she comes off like she wants him to control her. But that's not the type of person that he wants to be. So it's almost like she's going to the extreme to try to force him to do something or say something, you know what I mean? Kind of like what you were just saying, like, I'm not going to do nothing with the guy, but I would want my guy to say something. Not to, you know what I mean, that I really want him to be jealous, but I really want some type of reaction, you know what I mean? And then we go have... I'm going to give her, like, real-life example. 
Yeah, like before we got married, like I remember we were engaged and we were like at this bar and we were sitting at a table and then this dude like came up and started talking to me and I was dismissing him. I mean, I was friendly about it, but I was not trying to be rude and I would keep looking at him, my, you know, fiance at the time and um, I was handling it. But it frustrated me because I could tell the guy was like, well, he ain't saying nothing, so I'm going to keep going in. So eventually the guy had the audacity to even sit next to me. And then eventually I was like, blah, blah, blah. My fiance right here was like, what he got to do with me? And I'm like, he's sitting right here. <laughs> like, it was like, he literally did not come to defend my honor. And it was like, I had to defend myself the whole way. Like, it would have been like, he didn't even have to say nothing to him. All he had to do was grab me and kiss me or whatever. Just be like, nigga, you ain't shit. Like, you ain't even have to say nothing to him. You know, just be all over me enough for him to know, look, she done told you how many times? Look, I'm right here. Like, nobody has to get in a fighting situation, argument. You ain't even have to say nothing to him. But he showed me time after time during our engagement and our marriage people said if somebody shows you who they are believe them he showed me from up front like that he's not the confrontational type and um unfortunately when it comes to like even the parent aspect we're not together so I was like you know I beat myself up a lot but you know this is separate from you and Peyton honestly you guys would never probably relate to this situation I was like well yeah at least if we weren't going to work out, I thought at the very least, he was a really good father. Like he would still be, you know, catering to our kids regardless. Like he was a good father to them. And he was, even after we split up, he would be with them. But then when he got with the girl that he's married to now, like he like disappeared. And it was like, damn. And like, even now she's like trying to run for like Congress and shit for the fucking US. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? And she's, giving speeches like we have two kids together first of all she has a child from a previous relationship and then they have a newborn child that they just had together recently um but she doesn't ever speak about the four children that he has from me that we had and um so he actually has six children if you include his stepchild um but she doesn't ever speak on that. And that really hurts a lot. Because I was like, damn, you know, fuck me. Just, you can say, fuck me, whatever. You ain't got to like me, whatever. Whatever reason you choose not to like me, although I can be very likable. But she just chooses to do that. And it's the same thing with his mom. She cut, she didn't cut her off. The, the mother cut her off because they got in an argument. And then she said something in the heat of an argument but the mother-in-law took it very seriously like and I don't know if it's real but she said to her the only reason why I fuck with you is because I'm with your son so because of that they've never come back from it Mm -hmm. like that particular comment like a whole bunch of other things transpired that was crazy but she said that particular comment made her be like yeah so um and because of that, she also has made it very clear. You will never speak to your son until you and me are good. But that she's just very manipulative. And the spiritual realm is deep because you're supposed to pray for your enemies. I can't go back to that any more times that I'm doing this tonight. That it's difficult because I even have to pray for her. That I'm like, I really hope that she comes to have a relationship with Christ because I remember the the year that they were first together before they were officially engaged um, and I told her I don't believe in freaking Santa Claus and I teach my children that we believe that when we're celebrating Christmas it's about you know celebrating Jesus birth even though we don't know the exact date he was born we don't celebrate Santa we know it's a freaking costume and Batman breaks into random people's house and gives them presents as apology. Um, okay, first of all, my 10 year old shouldn't have been out here, but she heard what we we're talking about I'm and sorry, she just but I kept thinking about it and, and I really just wanted to say it out loud. <laughs> yep, and that's what she did. <laughs> did y'all hear her? Mm. She's too cute, too cute. <laughs> <laughs> that's my 10 year old, she'll be 11 this year. She's blowing bubbles outside. 
I'm sitting outside and she just <laughs> sometimes I be thinking she's not listening, but yeah, she was definitely listening. So even if I try not to listen, I still win. They always <laughs> listen. <laughs> <laughs> That was really cool. <sighs> so, there's that. So, I just, these are my beliefs, but I'm also like, you know, whatever. So, I like, I used to do Halloween every year, and I don't, you know, put anybody down, of, like, even my church that we go to. They still do, like, trunk or treat and stuff, but as of last year, I didn't do it, whatever. I don't judge if anybody still does it. I might do it this year. I don't know. I'm just kind of like trying to figure out my personal relationship. That's all about my personal relationship. And the thing is, is that that girl doesn't respect boundaries. That's the problem. Like, if people have boundaries, like, look, if my kids are over your house, you do your thing. I can't force you guys how you run your household. But she would try to run our household and run their household. And I was still his wife. Like, <laughs> that's what was crazy about it. It was just it's a whole nother animal. I was like, I hope you guys never have to experience what I'm experiencing. And it's crazy. God dang. God dang. Uh, right. We're gonna be Live boys. from LA. What is this that you put on there for the for the link? What's that link that oh, you put live, live from, from LA? LA. We, What's that? We, I, I, well, we got, we, there's an original group of us. It's called We Are The, the Initiated. There's like a group of seven of us. Maybe eight if I, if I if my number could be off, but we broke up. Uh, we got a, a podcast on Spotify and Apple and all that. We broke up and we, we have iced coffee, which is myself. Uh, I'm LA style, and some people call me Ice, and his last name Coffee. So we got a, a, a separate podcast called Ice Coffee with me and him, and then I have my own separate podcast, which is live from LA, and they all on Spotify, Apple, whatever that is. Like this is going to be, you know what I mean? So I hope y'all ain't saying nothing that y'all wouldn't take back. No, I'm good. I'm good. Oh no, not at all. Okay. This educational, educational. Now watch now. Now when the rest of the group hear this, they are gonna be mad that they wasn't on here, especially Carl. <laughs> they are gonna be mad that no, they didn't they didn't get a chance to get their stuff off because they normally all in. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what police is at. I know she all worked by now. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of information here, man. I, I hope some people uh, take something away from it. You know what I mean? And it helps you in whatever your situation is. Especially, again, us older people. Everybody's going to go through something. But the things that you can try to negate, please do. You know I mean? it's, it's the same thing we teach our kids. Like, hey, I made this mistake. You don't want to make this mistake, so I'm going I'm to give you the information so you can avoid this hurdle. You're going to still have hurdles, but you can avoid this. I agree yeah. with that. Like, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Peyton. I was just going to say, like, at the end of the day, it's just like communication is always going to be the key, even if you don't like what you are going to hear. Because sometimes you're not going to like what you're going to hear. But you're gonna have to get over it. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. Yeah, I did. Hey, it, do uh, Peyton or Love, do y'all have any closing remarks before we get up out of here? I think it's dinner time for me. I'm hungry. Who's that? No, Somebody that's about that it. Oh, we got a chat. What up, Chris? Oh, we gonna, let's play uh, Chris' message right there. Hey, Styles, Elizabeth. Uh, love to exist. Sounds like you guys been on for a while. I'm looking at the, the timestamp. Um, yo, um, I tell people all the time that uh, uh, the spirit of the person that you have, or oh, I've been telling them this nowadays, so let me just say it. The spirit of the person that you have inside of your head, you're looking for a vessel uh, that encompasses that spirit. And that spirit was cultivated through your childhood, watching Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, anime, all this other stuff. Uh, and you're looking for somebody who, again, is the vessel of that. Um, and so then you finally find somebody, uh, and then you realize that they can't contain all of the spirit that you have. They are their own person with their own background, with their own habits and all that, but they kind of match something about that, about the match with the picture that you have inside of your head, but believe it or not, 
they have that same thing of you. They have there's something about you that matches what's inside of their head. And so let me say this is what I'm about to say in the next comment. If you got another one, give me one second. So, um, yeah, the, with that said, you're in this game now of who's going to transform the most for each other. Uh, and, you know, if you've been in a relationship before, um, you've, you know, you're hyper vigilant about uh, making sure you don't change yourself too much for the other person. If you've ever been in a relationship for the first time ever in your life, you often find yourself transforming for that person. And then you get heartbroken and then that creates that hyper vigilance, that lack of forgiveness, uh, that lack, uh, distrust. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get hurt like this again. I'm only gonna find somebody who uh, does this and that for me, etc. Uh, but uh, as a married man who was in a relationship prior to this marriage for ten years, been married for three years, I have a three-year-old son. I mean, I'm married for four years. Three-year-old son, two-month-old girl. Um, once you guys get together and you guys are married, you're going to be both transforming into each other's ideals, and you have to. There, there's no one way around it. You have to. Oh, but man, maybe I can give advice for single people. Um, try to be your most authentic self as possible. Do the shadow work before you get into a relationship. That way, when somebody decides to be with you, they're being with your authentic self. That way, you don't have to change much, right? You can be your authentic self in the relationship if you've shown your authentic self the whole time prior to the relationship. So learn your authentic self, guys. Um, I promise you, you will find the one that you're supposed to be with. We appreciate that, Chris. What y'all got to say about that? How you like that? Thing? That was that was pretty deep. I liked it. Hey, yeah, some gems in there. I like this too. That was deep. He worked that real nice. Yeah, he did work that real nice. Good job, Chris. <laughs> you sold me a car just now. It was you applicable I mean? to <laughs> singles and married. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Who does Lena Bina? Did I, did I say that correct? What's going on, Lena Bina? I think I'm saying that correctly. I'm not sure. Her I'm avatar not. is beautiful. <laughs> I apologize if I'm not uh, saying that correctly. Um, love or, or hey, y'all got any podcasts coming up? Y'all got any shows coming up? Not me. I just follow her. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, right. nothing planned at this moment. Um, I got finals within the next week or two. And then when the summer opens up, then yeah, we can get this popping. Uh, I'm trying to get Peyton and our sister uh, Orozca on here um, because she's really good at speaking. And another, I got another sister um, that would be really good. Um, but once I'm done with my finals, then I'll have a little bit more flexibility because these girls, they have some knowledge that they can speak on different topics, and I'm loving it, like for sure. Definitely, I, I might have to. I might have to hit y'all up for for a few episodes. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. good. We appreciate it. With that, you know what I mean. Close remarks. This is the weekend. Well, it's the end of my weekend. I, I work today. I, damn, it ain't even really a weekend because I work Friday and Saturday. Off tomorrow, I'm back, back Monday. Uh, but the, I, actually, I got to weigh in because because my group is on this dietary thing, and you know what I mean. Try to lose the most weight too, so I actually got to weigh in. But with that, man, I hope y'all had a good week, a good productive week. Uh, we will be back Monday for uh, Peyton and Love don't know, but Monday, me and me and Coffee you know, normally do episode Monday where um, it's, it's normally a, a random conversation. But it's, it's introduced by um, uh, Monday check in. Monday check in is where we uh, go through three different categories: uh, personal life. Uh, well, how am I doing personally? How, how are you doing in your uh, business wise, which is like your nine to five or job career? And then how you doing in entrepreneurship wise, as far as like if you into real estate flipping cars, do you own any type of business, are you trying to get into 
whatever you else, whatever your hustle is. You, you know, I'm gonna tell you like straight up, like what I do, um, independent contract wise, it's so much more simpler. And I accidentally stumbled upon it. I thought I was volunteering, but um, I actually get speak. Um, I get paid to be a public speaker for NAMI, which is um, National Alliance for Mental Illness. Um, I don't publicize it because I um. I post a lot of controversial things, and I don't want it to be mixed with the company that I'm a contractor with. And then, unfortunately, if they were ever not like some of the things that I post, and then it, they get ear of it, and then I lose my contract. So um, that's why I don't really publicize. Um, but recently, my boss asked me to um, try to recruit some people if they were interested. So I made a post about it but I didn't make it very obvious that that's what I do I just why did you for the love of God I know she didn't okay I'm sorry my kids just spilled bubbles everywhere life of mother (laughs) so um yeah I don't I don't really like to publicize it but um at some point if I were to ever gain traction then people would know what I do um not everything I do, but that's one of the things that I do. Um, and I didn't realize I was going to get paid for it, but I've been doing it since May of last year. It started off as me thinking I was just going to be volunteering and I didn't know they were going to pay me for it. And I benefit from doing that. And then I found out that there were other certifications that I could get um, where I could do more engagements that allows me to um, make a profit off of my disability if I do the things I need to do but it's difficult when it's time management and um, making sure I prioritize the things that I'm supposed to do um, to keep up with my certifications and stuff um, to speak because I'm not speaking from a perspective like oh I'm healed I'm speaking from a perspective of my mental health journey what I'm doing um, and what works for me or what doesn't work for me and all that stuff um, and it helps people to understand like um like the public safety officials, the law enforcement, things like that. So they're more compassionate towards people that are going through mental health issues. Um, so like, for instance, let's say that 911 is called and then they, it's, let's say like a, a man or a woman, because I'm not going to say it's just a woman that's calling. Because sometimes a man could call and they'd be like, hey, well, we're dealing with the situation. Immediately, they're thinking domestic violence. So they're like, hey, I'm required by law. Somebody's got to go to jail. But if they if they have been trained, you know, people like us, if we train them, then they're like, okay, we'll send another person in instead of us if we showed up to the scene first, or maybe somebody else will show up to the scene that's necessarily trained for that, and they will make sure that no one goes to jail, and they'll give them the resources so that they are taken care for. Because most people think, hey, I'm not trying to get my significant other. Or my family member or whoever it is like my friend or whatever put in jail they're just they're having a freaking mental health bout you know they just need help i'm not trying to get them in jail but initially years ago that's how it was that's what they would do they would just put somebody in jail somebody's got to go so now they they train people like us um to make sure they're educated so there are specific Um, law enforcement officials and public safety officials and also when it comes to teachers like the staff they don't just immediately say a kid is being a bad kid okay well we've educated the teachers we've educated the staff like whether it's the you know the lunch lady or whatever like they're all being educated so they realize somebody's going through a mental health situation they're not a bad kid They're they're not a bad person they're going through something Let's look into it. You see what I'm saying? We're educating the public against the stigma surrounding mental health. Oh, yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Go ahead. And, you know, that kind of ties into the, the partner, you know? Like, I know we're wrapping this up, but, you know, to sum this up, like, it blows my mind, like, I've talked to so many guys and I I have gone through a lot of different things and when I tell the guys that I 
have ever dated or was in a situation with um, what I got going on with my life. They'll brag about the little things that they got going on. I say little because they belittle me the way that they treat me. And they would make me feel so little. And they would not be proud of me, of any accomplishments that I would have made. I literally had a guy boo me. And I posted that on my IG. A guy boo me during a presentation that I had. Well, it wasn't a presentation. It was I was doing a stand-up comedy, trying my hand at it. And um, it was like, dude, you're getting pussy at the end of the day. You kidding me? I'm paying for your fucking meal, your drinks, all that shit. We're going to a hotel that I'm paying for. And you're booing me? And he didn't even have the balls. When I said on stage, who's booing me? He didn't even say that it was him. How crazy was that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It was like, I have, it, it blows my mind because it shows that I have very little self-esteem. That's why I have no business dating anyone. If I'm going to allow a man to belittle me and then still treat him like he's supposedly a king. Why? Yeah, you got to do something about that love. Right. And I'm working on that. And I'm very transparent about it. That's what's up. Because, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I admire everyone else that does it. Like, I'm not as transparent as a lot of people that I admire. I swear, I'm so nowhere close. <laughs> but I'm trying to get there, you know? Because hey, um, I'm the type of person that... Progress. <laughs> yeah, because you know I, mean? I... It's my first I'll time post being a 38-year-old. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, well, no, seriously. I'll post some stuff on Instagram and then I'll delete it like a few days later and I'd be like embarrassed. So if somebody would have caught it, they caught some gold because I deleted it. Like, because I'm scared, you know, because I, I don't, I'm not, I do care. I do care what people think. I do because I, I'm very shy and I, I don't post for um, validation per se, but I definitely post because I want to hear feedback from people that relate. And sometimes people don't say that they can relate. They just, um, they see it and they might like it. um, But I would like to get feedback. And I know that not everyone's going to comment publicly and some people might, you know, message me privately. But it matters a lot to me um, for other people to put themselves out there enough to tell me that, hey, it meant something, even if it's one person. So that that's what keeps it going. Even if it's one person that says, hey, what you said kept me going. And that's why I do my Ending the Silence presentations for mental health, um, for NAMI. You know, National Alliance for Mental Illness, it's what's kept me going, speaking, it is not about the money because, like I said, I initially started it uh, from a volunteer aspect, not knowing that the more certifications I got, I would get paid. So, it's a blessing in disguise because God is allowing me to profit from my pain, even though I suck <laughs> as a stand-up comedian. I've tried, but all I can do is speak like a public speaker, like this. Like, when I do stand-up comedy, that's what I sound like. Like, I literally, I cannot, you know, I'll make jokes here and there, but I, I can't do it straight up like stand-up comedian. And I, I give kudos to anybody that can keep a joke running every five seconds. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Nope. I don't run like that. I'm to be a stand-up comedian. Man, I, I try. Yo, I will be a host. Maybe, but I cannot be a straight up stand up comedian. I can do skits Harvey, all day. You know what? I don't know. I give that man kudos too because he keeps people going too. And nope, I can't even be a nope. I I think about how he runs. I can't do it either because he he gets hit all the time. He been married three times. You know how many people try to say your books ain't shit because he done got married all those times. I hate that. I'm like, yo, if I got married again, I'd be on my third marriage, if that's the case. So then I'd be like, damn, people gonna shit on me? 
You know, like I'm just people ruthless. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. It's hard out here for a pimp. That's why you gotta. That's why you gotta do your best to try to ignore unhappy people. I know. I if know. If you that focused on what I'm doing over here, then clearly you're not you're not in tune with your own situation. Please say that again, stereo styles. <laughs> What you saying over there, girl? <laughs> with your beautiful self. I mean, she honestly, I'm gonna tell you, Peyton. Peyton has been my girl that has inspired me to come out my skin, my element. Because honestly, I still don't come out all the way, but she speaks so truthfully, and she takes a break from social media when she needs to. But when she does speak, she's so bold. And I admire her, and I give her a lot of credit because honestly, she, she's giving she's giving me that confidence, and she doesn't even realize. I thank you. I try to be authentic because you know we're not perfect, and I want. I mean, that's what I try to put out there on Instagram. Like, I'm not a perfect person. I'm not these little Instagram models. Nothing is perfect. That's all fake. You just have to be true to yourself in everything in life. You can't be fake out here, Peyton. Try yeah, not to be. Try so not to be. <laughs> no, she's been so real. Like, oh my God. Like, she's so rare. Like, there's so many people that post like all these perfect things like everything's perfect like everything's roses and like I literally there's been days that I've like watched her I feel like I'm gonna cry like right now I'm trying not to but I had to step away from the kids for a moment and I'm like her stories like she doesn't always post everything like on her actual posts on IG and I don't even have to go in details but she knows like there's stuff that she posts on her stories that are specific to people that are like true like one on one with her that I was like oh my god I felt like she was speaking directly to me and then we have each other's personal phone numbers like we met through Instagram and then she introduced me to another sister of ours that unfortunately she wasn't able to be on here tonight with us but sometimes she does get on here with me and like if it wasn't for Peyton I wouldn't be close with Orozca and I'm just like (sighs) they're my sisters for life like and I've never met them in person we've talked like over the phone or we've done this virtual thing but that's what's kept us going we've kept each other going I lost my only sister through suicide January of last year. And these girls have kept me going. I met them after my sister died. And they've kept me going. Both of them. But Peyton introduced me to her. But Peyton was the first one. And we've always been authentic with each other. And I just love how Peyton has brought me out of my shell. Like everyone, I just, whew. Peyton, I just love you so much. I do. I love you too. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> all of this. I know. So one of these days, we will all meet somehow. It'll happen. Yes. Y'all are my only friends in life. <laughs> I don't have <laughs> personal friends in real life because everybody's just fake. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> yeah, dang. <clears throat> All right, with, with pain and uh and love, uh, love connection. You know what I mean? Live on stereo. You know what I mean? That's what we do here. We gonna we gonna end the show again. We'll be back Monday with a Monday check in on your personal business and entrepreneurship on the scale of one to ten. Uh, if you've never been to our Monday check-in, you let, it, let it just know. Like, let's say in my personal life, I feel I might feel like I'm at a I'm at a seven. My personal life would be like me and my relationship uh, with my old lady, my family, like my mom and type family, my kids, uh, and what I think I can do better in that whatever I'm I'm, I'm leaving business I might be like oh man it's like at a five my business score is always low because I hate I hate nine to five it's always low but
but then my, my entrepreneurship would be my hustle because I'm in real estate and I do podcasts and I do uh, film and mid TV things. It, it, it normally covers up for that. So, and then whatever I feel like I can do better, then I, I say that. You know what I mean? Sometimes we find out that that helps you by saying that out loud. It registers something in your head. It's almost like reading out loud. Uh, how it, it sticks with you more than reading a book or reading something in your head. You know what I mean? So we do Monday check-in where people call in and let us know what their scores are and then we go into the topic and as people hop in, they continue to let us know what their scores and while we continue on the topic. So we'll be back here Monday with Monday check-in. This is Valerie. I hope you guys have a very good What time is day. Monday check-in? Um, and is it Eastern? Um, give us Eastern time because we're on the same time. Uh, we're We're Central. So, what do you guys, an hour behind us? So, Monday check-in, that'll probably be like at 6. That'll be like 7 o'clock your time. If I'm not mistaken. That sounds right. right. Yeah, I think so. Because okay. it East Coast would be like 7, then we'll be at 6, and then West Coast would be like 4. I think they're 2 hours behind us. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so th- th- that's normally around six to five times time so se- seven to seven you guys um so th- th- that'll be m- Monday check in and then we'll go into uh the topic which I think we haven't set it up yet we normally have these way in advance uh and normally we go to our profile and set it up again me, me and Coffee and the gang is really just getting back we were on stereo kind of like when it first came out and then we stopped like last year April just to do the, the main podcast on the other platform because a lot of life stuff is going on with, with COVID and situations like that. But we making our return as of what was a week ago. How about a week ago? We, we back. <laughs> um, so mo- Monday, mo- Monday check in, and uh, we gonna hope everybody have a good weekend. And hopefully, how hopefully long y'all come would, uh, Monday check in being like thirty minutes, hour at the most? Probably hours the most with, with the check in and the topic. I think the topic would be because me and Peyton got in. the kids to get ready in the morning about that time, so that's why I'm saying that. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but we normally have have them preloaded in the in, in the what's called which we haven't done yet. But I'll probably end up having to sit down and do it tomorrow so everybody can uh, know uh, like normally it's like two weeks in advance what shows we have we have coming up. Uh, so y'all, I think y'all can. They added a bed that they didn't used to have last year, and then when something happens, um, then you get a notification when the show goes live. But I think the show is going to be the topic we're selling on is thirty thirty plus. Oh, that, was, that, was, that was coffee calling. I think the, I think the topic was going to be thirty plus on social media. Huh. I think I think that's what we're gonna talk about. Okay. I told you before, I'm like, man, me and my spouse are even friends on social media. You know, some of the worst times in my relationship, me, me and Angie was friends on social media. What yeah, you dad. just said, you and your spouse? Okay, I'm just one minute. Not even I'm friends take on a social cigarette media. To this. It works better that way. Where's my Marlboro? <laughs> It works better that way. Hold up. I need my Marlboro Barrel cigarette. I didn't even hear you right. Peyton, did you hear that? I think I'm lost. I, I think I don't I know under, how works. I'm lost. <laughs> I understand where he's coming from because I get very, very jealous when I see people like his stuff. Women. <laughs> I completely understand where he's coming from. Exactly. <laughs> Just going on, and I'm just so unhappy. If I see that, I can, I might assume like if me and her just had a beef, that she might be talking about me, even though in reality she's not. She might not even be, but this might have be. That might be how I think. It just, it was just unnecessary. That's exactly right. I, so I don't, I don't, I don't think we agree. As partners, have to be friends on social media. We've been better off without it. Not only are we not friends on social media, we also block each other. So I can't even get to her page to see nothing. If I wanted to. Oh my god. Or vice versa. I don't know how marriage works at all. I'm fucking lost. Excuse my language. You might have to I bleep me out. Like, <laughs> listen, listen. On, on the show, on the episode, we, 
we're going to talk about it. <laughs> we, can, we can get into it. Because I can tell you, uh, along with, along with, like, the couple that I told you about that's going through, like, they're both cheating and both having that issue, and they in a 40, or she's 40, I don't know, he's, he's 40-something, but she's 40 for, for sure, and, and that's what they're going through in their 40s. Social media is also a big part of that, and, and, and I'll, I'll talk about that. I'll talk, I'll, I'll talk about that, too. Not a big part of why, what's going on, but a big part of, like, an added barrier or layer to just, like, bull crap. I, I'll give you a sample now. Right. So in, in, in one of her times of messing around, she spent the night somewhere. And the first thing she do, because in our head, men men believe that women love and stay on damn near live on social media. First thing she does is open Snapchat. But guess who's a friend of hers on Snapchat and has her location open? And he feels some type of way, so he's out looking for her. On social media. Added, added nonsense. And the person house that that she's at, uh, you don't want to go to his house, bro. I can tell you that you don't want to. <laughs> that's not somebody's house that you want to bam on. As long as you don't want to do that on somebody else's property. I get your wife is there. She shouldn't be there, but he ain't. Maybe he don't know nothing about that. I can because I can tell you somebody comes to my house with an attitude, asking me questions about man, so and so. I'm a. I'm not gonna. Understand nothing that you're talking about in that, in that moment. I'm gonna wonder why the fuck you on my property and why you knocking on my door. Why you coming off with attitude? You know, you got a lot of steam and frustration coming off to be asking me anything on my property. But that's just an added layer. Like, and I'm seeing people in their 30s and 40s who still posting like stuff from like you not 20s no more. It's people. It's people on Facebook causing fights, starting fights, dropping locations for fights, and then they 40. In your 40s? You on Facebook fighting people in the inbox in your 40s? What are we doing with ourselves, man? What are we doing? You're speaking this true. Like, that's when, when do that's we leave probably that why a lot of managers do mess up. You're probably right. Like, seriously, you and Peyton are on to something, for real. Like, that social media stuff really does damage marriages, for real. Now, if it's all productive, because like, I have them, but I normally only post things like if I got a show coming up, episode coming up, like I just, it's normally for like advertising purposes. Now, okay, see older, what you just me. said was different. What I was doing, like I, I did what the typical people would do. I would post about my life. So then, when you got, look, I, I'm telling you, till this day, I'm thinking the wife that he's got, she was scoping out, seeing that we was going through problems. And then, as soon as she saw that there was an entryway, she scooped right on through. Like, I think that's kind of how it went down, like, to a certain degree, to be honest. Hello, Hafsa. Hey, hi, guys. How are you? I'm okay. How are y'all? We're Gucci. I don't know who you are, but I am love to exist. And then there's Peyton, and I'm the one and only stereo staff. That's my best friend. My hey. best friend. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, lovely to meet you. That's my lovely best friend. Lovely to meet you guys. <laughs> hey, Where are you guys from? I'm in Georgia. Virginia. Okay. okay. Ooh, we got a lot of guys off people. I'm in Wisconsin currently. Okay. Oh, ooh. I'm from London. Oh, London. Okay, my awesome. mother is over in the over in the UK. Yeah, I'm from the UK, so I'm guessing you guys, yeah. Oh, so it's, it's like uh, like two o'clock in the morning over there, or something, right? Yeah, is it two twenty-five a.m. Oh snap! So it's like party hour over there, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's got some words to speak. I've got some wisdom. Okay, we're here for it. <laughs> now nah, I'm just messing. I love it. I love it though. But uh, you ever yeah, heard yeah, of so Doctor Who? Yeah. Oh, pardon? You ever heard of Doctor Who, the TV show? 
Uh, I still watch it. I feel like out of all my friends, I still watch it to this day. <laughs> I love your accent. <laughs> Did it end? Didn't Doctor Who end? No, what the fuck? Doctor Who's still going on. They're going to have a new huh? character now. Last season, it was like <laughs> a female. And there was a black guy and a white guy and an old white guy. And then now it's like a new season is going to happen. But they're not sure who they're going to recast. Because I think the they want to get with the times. They did a female Doctor Who. I don't know who they're going to do now to mix it up. Maybe a black Doctor Who. Who knows? I don't know. Girl. They've never had one. <laughs> they never had a female a Doctor. And then now they have. I think the next one will be black. So... Well, I'm going to have to jump off here and get my little one in the bed, guys. Oh, you okay. sound good. I love you so much. <laughs> yeah, he's still up. <laughs> Quit. Right, oh, you're but I will check back in with y'all. Okay, like, we, we were just about to get okay, out bye, of here anyway. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye. But with that, again, we got Monday check-in. Uh, should be at six. Uh, the time should be in either today or tomorrow. Uh, if you check my the serial profile, it, it, it'll be okay. With the time. What uh, is the Monday conversation check-in. like? I just showed you guys. I don't know what is. I see the topic. It says relationship nowadays are extremely fragile, in part from everyone dating anyone. That is so true. I don't know if you guys are still on this topic, but I hear. If you have something to add, you can go ahead before we get out of here. Oh, yes, please. No, I just feel like, honestly, no one wants to try anymore because of social media. That's true. <laughs> like, I'm personally single. It's because, like, I meet people and I just, like, I can't. I don't want to meet people. I'm just like, I don't want to be with this person for the next 50 years because I feel like nowadays no one has morals. Everyone wants to be a content creator. Everyone wants to put their, everyone wants to put their social media out there. They don't want to try. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's a very fragile era that we live in right now. And no one wants to act their age. Like, I'm 27. I like doing what 27 year olds do sometimes I like going picnics library I like going out but not as much but then I feel like everyone just wants to be young they want to be in the crowd they want to be in the get to know do you get me a lot of followers like you see yeah like a lot 30 year olds act like 18 year olds like eight, eight, uh, 12 year olds like, act like 18 year olds no one really acts their age like children right now they don't act like children you see, like, a 12-year-old wearing full grow- full adult makeup. And you're just like, yo, just be you. Just enjoy your childhood. Enjoy your age. I don't think they they know how they're supposed to act. Yeah, because of think, social media. They, Honestly, they it's because of social media. And they do what they don't. That's, how, that's why, I, like, we were just talking, talking about uh, Monday's topic, which is 30, 30 plus on social media is I still see a lot of people that's up in age doing and acting like they're 20 years old on social exactly media. what like, I'm saying you shouldn't be doing like I wouldn't post nothing like that bro. I wouldn't post nothing I wouldn't you know what I mean and I get it it is a free country you can't do what you want to but there's like it's just so much negativity on social media that it's like and then part of and part of that is due to us older people who should be leading by example and not posting certain things but we feed right into it uh, it's like it's it's something it's something about drama. It's something about drama that appeases to people. It's, mm-hmm. it's almost like the, the reason why the news will report something tragic over reporting something good that happened. It's the drama. You know what I mean? It's, it's like they get more ratings when it, when negativity happens than when positivity happens. Like Kim Kardashian said, good publicity or bad publicity is still publicity at the end of the day. But but the, the 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 part they don't mention is they make more money off bad publicity. Mm-hmm. Like the the Kardashian TV show doesn't really show a lot of productivity. Not saying that they, those women are not progressing financially or in a life situations because they are. But it's normally about beef. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot of crazy stuff happening. This is what y'all put on TV. This is why people are watching y'all TV shows. At some point in time, yep. y'all did the analytics and it said 
the, the episode with the negative stuff going in or the drama gets more ratings slash more views which makes more money than the other episodes so this is what y'all do Love and Hip Hop exactly. has so many so many seasons because of the drama and it brings in so much money because of the drama you know what I mean like they just they just what, what we kind of act as a people it's not cool but it, it seems like as a people and by people I mean like just us not even just Americans or Europeans everybody on this planet it seems like we, we give more attention to negativity shit to negative stuff than, than positive stuff and this is how a social media is just flying because I see way more negative stuff on social media than positive to be honest I have to go search for positive stuff I can open up my Facebook right now and I bet you a lot of a lot of stuff that I'm about to scroll through is stupid no but I would say for sure like for example I stopped watching BBC news I stopped watching normal news Sky news Al Jazeera news because every time I watched it it would make me depressed or it was just always negativity like you never switch on the news whatever like BBC news it would be like a good a good thing it would be like oh yeah this many people died the school's going on famine poverty like poverty this government's doing this it would be like nothing positive you just come out of it depressed political no, cause I, cause I could be like let's say I come out there man you know what I think Jay-Z is the best rapper in the world how many how many what how likely is that to just yeah, let's say 100 people was in here listen. how likely is that to catch on to those 100 people and they go post and talk about it or spread the word versus me saying man I think Jay-Z is the worst rapper to have ever lived that's going to gain more traction what he said, what? Now everybody gonna wanna either debate it, talk about it, headline, this dude says something. The negativity always catches fire way faster than, than the positive. But, but it's, 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 it's drama. I mean, it creates conversations as well, but I don't know. And that's why I don't I don't really mess with social media like that. Uh, because of that. But with that, I'm gonna get up out of here. Love to you, ladies. Have a great weekend. You know what I mean? Again, we'll be back Monday. Uh, yes, I look forward to it. Yes. Shout out to Love. Again, shout out to Peyton, who was here. Shout out to Hasta. You know what I mean? And I'm going to get up out of here, Hasta. Thank you, Hasta. You are amazing. And see, again, have a good weekend, everybody. Stay safe right. out here because it, it is some crazy people out here doing crazy things. We want to make it to Monday. I actually want to wake up every day and tomorrow, Sunday. So if, you, if you're that type of religious person, you know I mean, today, tomorrow, your day. Y'all. Yeah. You know what I mean? So make sure y'all get a good word. Let me know what the word is Monday. Legit. A good word. Let me know what the word is Monday because I'll be needing that. Yes. Spread the positivity. Fact. For sure, Man. baby. <laughs> and with that, I'll see you. I'll see you guys later. Later, ladies. All right. Night. Bye. 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 Bye